Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Biggsville, Illinois, at West Central High School, the defending IHFA state champions. As we are here for Bushnell Prairie City High School football and the West Central Heats. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Chris Frank Kaiser will be alongside as well a little bit later. Came on a little early so you could see the homecoming court for the West Central Heat. Lydia is the child of Matt and Ashley Price. Lydia is the child of Dudley and Julie Rickett. Lydia is the child of Dudley and Julie Rickett. Now for the sophomores. The girl attending for the sophomore class is Lily Goble. Lillian is the child of Laura Goble and Travis Bigger. The boy attendant for the sophomore class is Cody Way. Cody is the child of Shauna Brown and Jim Way. Hopefully folks can hear this okay. And now for the juniors. The girl attendant for the junior class is Addison Sykes. Addie is the child of Michael Sykes and Amanda Van Arsdale. The boy attendant for the junior class is Peyton Woodbury. Peyton is the child of Todd and Chandra Woodbury. These are the attendants as voted by their classmates. Can we get a round of applause for them, please? And now moving on to your 2023 homecoming court. Our first queen candidate from the senior class is Liberty Miller. Olivia is the child of Shannon Miller and James Miller. She's involved in student council, NHS, NHS, FFA, volleyball, and swim. After high school, she plans to go to school to become an orthodontist by getting a major in pre-med and a minor in business. She's accompanied by Dane Giddings. Dane is the child of Lynn Meyer and Daryl Giddings. She is involved in FFA, student council, FBLA and football. After high school, Dane will be interning with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Our second queen candidate from the senior class is Piper Ebert. Piper is the child of Nicole Ebert and Clint Cruz. She is involved in volleyball. After high school, she plans to go on to college for ocean conservation. She's accompanied by Isaiah Stepson. Isaiah is the child of Rebecca Stepson and Timothy Hall. He is involved in football and basketball. After high school, he wants to go either into the military or some sort of trade. Our third queen candidate from the senior class is Gracie Winters. Gracie is the child of Shanna Avery and Travis Winters. She is involved in student council, NHS, FFA, book club, yearbook, volleyball, and softball. After high school, she plans to go to college to become a cardiac technician. She is accompanied by Blake Cole. Blake is the child of Brett Cole and Jana Kozak. He is involved in football and FFA. He currently serves as the 23-24 Vice President of the FFA Chapter. After high school, Blake plans to work at Rockwell. Our final clean candidate from the senior class is Samantha Meyer. Sam is the child of Marcy and Sean Meyer. She is involved in NHS, student council, class officer, FFA, basketball, and softball. After high school, she wants to go to Western Illinois University for two years to study engineering and would like to continue studying engineering at the University of Illinois in Champaign. With the final goal to return and help run the family farm as a career. She's accompanied by Christopher Cassidy. He 
J. is the child of Amanda Marder and Kenny Cassidy. He is involved in F football. After high school, he plans to go into a trade. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your 2023 homecoming court. Their coronation will be at 9.30 during the homecoming dance tomorrow night. Community is welcome to attend. Good luck to all our candidates and congratulations. So that will do it for the right, presentation so of the homecoming court in attendance for the West Central Heat. They're having their homecoming tonight. As I said, it's Dwayne Hewlett and Chris Frankhauser with you. Get Chris underneath the headset here and get him to turn his mic back up and we can have a little conversation maybe. Well, Chris, another Friday night, another football game for BPC, and they've made it to the home of the defending state champion, West Central Heat, this week. Yeah, West Central getting their first win of the season last week. Uh, of course, a lot of talent on that squad last year that uh, won the eight-man title, but uh, no, they got a, they're coming in, both teams on a one-game winning streak. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're both uh, – actually, BPC's on a two-game winning yeah, streak. They're on right. a two-game winning streak. Uh, they come in with opposite records, though. Yeah, four uh, and one for BPC and one and four for the Heat. So both teams have coming in on a win and a drastic change for West Central. And, and But <clears throat> you, you can maybe see what homecoming – and a state championship will do for a school because there's all kinds of stuff here for, for homecoming. Uh -huh. There's tons of people here for homecoming. I almost feel bad that we had to set up in bleachers because we took a few seats away, uh, yeah. but there is a lot of people here tonight. Uh, uh, Wood-fired pizza place, uh, coffee. Dame Fine Coffee Dame is Fine here. Dame Fine Coffee, and, yeah, it's uh, quite the crowd. And, of course, you've got uh, alumni from West Central, Southern, and Union High Schools. Yeah, I actually saw some Southern football jerseys walking yeah, around. I haven't I, seen yeah, those for a long time. You know, most people may not realize this, but I actually went to Southern through the end of second grade. Okay. So I was a Southern student, lived in Smithshire. I saw Missy Avery down here. She's a, She was my neighbor when I was growing up, and I saw her to get to talk to her. I saw her dad, Dave. So I've seen some people that I well, remember from the days gone by. And I was joking on the way up. Joe, I, before moving to Macomb, was a Yorkwood golden bear for a while through uh late elementary school and junior high and uh lived in kirkwood and drove some of the roads up here uh that i had not been on probably and since then truthfully well i want to tell you if anybody just heard that can pop it wasn't a beer folks it's a pepsi <laughs> <laughs> guy sitting in front of me i think he heard it too you heard it pop didn't you you were wondering weren't you this is going to be one of those this broadcasts this tv guy back here is Busted into the the hard liquor already. It actually a hard. I guess it'd just be beer. I don't drink, so anything's hard liquor to me. I guess. <laughs> but, but uh, anyway, yeah, back uh, to what we were talking about. Oh, and uh, nice to be over on the evening. We made several trips over here in the last couple of years for Saturday afternoon. Very hot Saturday afternoon contest. Weren't you here with Jason and Miles when the yes, when the phone died yes, because it, it got it too hot? Yes, that was uh, two years ago, I believe. <laughs> yeah, those are the good old days. We're still on phone tonight as well, but hopefully we should have uh, should not have any problems. I don't think and as 5G. Back then we were on a 4G phone, right? So we were a little more uh, a little more uh, hesitant to get things done back in the day, anyway. But 5G and everything else is going on. It seems to work pretty well. We came out here. I don't know if the radio station's here tonight or not, but we came out because. Really, it's easier for us to be out here than trying to find where to put the camera inside. Right, it? yeah. Not a overly big set of bleachers and press box here. Nice, very nice bleachers and press box. But as you said, with the coaching staffs and possible radio stations and stuff, and it's just a little too cramped quarters in there for us to move around and uh, set stuff up. And the window just aren't big enough for us to shoot out of very well either. So. Yeah, those are – I'd forgotten that these windows aren't <laughs> – they're about half-size windows. We uh, – I will apologize, folks, in advance. I'm the one running the camera tonight, so uh, if the camera work is shoddy. Blame the boss. Blame the boss. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, blame the guy that doesn't run the camera very much. Probably <laughs> probably should do it more so that he doesn't have that excuse in all honesty. But uh, well, I'm trying out the new. Uh, yeah, we new bought new Zoom things, remotes. remote Zooms, so you can do it with one hand. You don't have to reach around the camera and up on top of it to get it to work. And it's uh, just trying new things, trying to get better. we got some new stuff coming up. It sounds like I'm not going to talk about that just yet, but uh, we're pretty happy with where things are moving to. So uh, we got South Fulton and Princeville on our channel tonight. Wow. South Fulton, is we're simulcasting that with Q98.1 out of Canton. They needed somebody to cover a game, and we had an open night. I called Kenny Suter, and I said, hey. Actually, I messaged him. You know, people don't call right. anybody anymore. I said, hey, Kenny, what do you think about doing this? He said, I think we can do it. He asked his partner, Wayne, and they, they were all about it. So they don't get to do a game tomorrow, so they went ahead and did the game today and tonight. And so we're simulcasting that, so we're happy to be at South. It's always fun to be at South Fulton. We enjoy it over there and fun to get there. And then uh, we have the biggest game in I-8FA to oh, this point yeah. in the year is tonight. You can see it on the Hewlett Public Pro LLC YouTube channel. And our friends up in Milledgeville who broadcast on all their games on our channel are doing that tonight. Polo, or not Polo, Amboy, one and number two. one, Milledgeville, number two. And there's been some argument about which one should be number one or number two. We're going to settle that tonight. No better place to settle it than on the field. That's right. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what uh, Milledgeville put up a 74 spot last week. Yeah. and uh, Or 72 or 74, I don't remember. But uh, <laughs> they are legit. I mean, we saw that building last year, right? Mm -hmm. If you saw any of the Milledgeville games last year into the playoffs and stuff, and you saw that coming. Nye is a wonderful player, and uh, he is doing great things up there. And that should be a fantastic football game. Of course, BPC is going to get this, make that long trip up on a Friday night to end the uh, regular season. And, you know, looking at here some of the uh, playoff talk, that very likely it could be. You know, there's still a lot of football to be played, but uh, some folks think that might we might get a rematch in week one of the playoffs with BPC and Milledgeville possibly. Well, the the key for BPC is to win yes. this game and next and week. win next week because they and finish with the two two with Ridgewood, I mean, who is very good, good, right? And then Milledgeville, so they need to win this week. Yep, and they need to win. Next week's Next the week big game. Is the for game BPC. That, that's the game that can be swing the wash game. game, the swing, the swing game, game for BPC, yeah. Right. Now, for West Central, huge turnaround this year. I mean, you can look at the team, the quarterback's smaller, the running backs are smaller. The, I mean, it's a smaller team, but at the same time, they've got. You have to think that they can build towards their, where they're going to be better. And at some point, with a coach like Coach Kirby, they're going to find that rhythm and find that ability to tackle and find that ability to run and find that ability to do things you need to do to win. And they might sneak up on a few people here towards the end of the year. Yeah, and it, I know it was big for them to get that win last week against uh, Galva. Uh, did play Peoria Heights. and Obviously, Peoria Heights won that game earlier in the season when they played West Central. But Coach Kirby team, you don't want to take anything for granted. No matter what, you know, one and four, five and oh, whatever the records are, he's going to bring his kids and they're going to be ready to play. And uh, you're going to get the best out of them. And like I said, you can't, you can't really look past anybody in any. Getting ready to do the coin toss now. Yeah, you can't. And in eight man football, you're absolutely right. You can't look past anybody. No. And, uh, and like I said, you, you know, there's still a lot of football to be played, and obviously, you know, you want to come out and win. And like I said, for BPC on their side, it's big here the next two weeks. Um, next, the ne these two games, because you finish, as you said, at Ridgewood, who gave Amboy fits um, at home. You're fine. No worries. And um, you're, I'm going to wiggle the camera a lot more than you guys will. I'll guarantee let's see it. See what we got for a toss. Here. Sorry. Sorry, folks. They were setting some chairs down beside us and worried about where they're going to hit the camera. And I... BPC maybe won the toss and deferred to the second half. Yep. The Heat will receive going right to left on your TV screen. BPC will kick off. And one of the biggest surprises for BPC is its kicking game. 
Yeah. I mean, they had a field goal, was it last week or the week before? Uh, the week before? Two weeks ago at home, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, you know, they're kicking balls into the end zone, for goodness sake. Now, they will be kicking into the wind for the first quarter, but Perelku has got a leg. Yeah, that was like a 25-yarder that I think, talking to Coach Sisler here over the last couple of weeks, you know, 35 is not necessarily out of his range. And the way he kicked, and he kicked one here in warm-up from – well past 40. Yeah, 40, 45. But it's easier to kick in warm-ups because right. you're, you know, you don't have a rush coming right. at you. you, you the ball's held there, and you know it's guaranteed to be a good snap. Right. But uh, we'll see how things go as he can get a look at the heat now. And they got camouflage yeah. jerseys, don't they? Yes, they do. Red and blue camouflage jerseys on tonight. And I appreciate the white numbers. Uh, Peoria Heights last week. Red jerseys with blue numbers and sitting clear on top of the hill, like Barely we do. Tell. You can't. Even you see could it, not you? really tell the numbers for the Patriots. For a while. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, they tend to do that over there, at Peoria Heights, for some reason. That seems to have been a thing. Yeah, for several years, going over there with Bush and all that. They do it in basketball too, right? So we're going to get ready to go here. We'll take a quick break. We're about seven minutes or eight minutes away from the kickoff here from West Central High School. You're watching Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance coverage of BPC Sports on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. After my appointment that day, I just made up my mind that I'm going to have my baby here in Macomb <laughs> and this hospital because irrespective of where you're from, who you are, it's just their line of duty to make sure they give care, make you comfortable. I told them about the staff of MDH, you know, they are, they are all good. And you will get all the support you need. This is just the best place for you and your family. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential, with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. When my parents told me they'd be using Adam's Experts, I felt a bit replaced. I mean, they always called me to remove their viruses or get their printer connected to Wi-Fi. He even set up their new Roku. How do I adopt a new son? <laughs> <laughs> but then he taught me a few things. And now, we're like tech brothers. Adams Experts. Repair, maintenance, and setup for all your home technology needs. It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community, uh, and I'm from a farm family, and ultimately I always wanted to practice in a place like that, and I felt that I had uh, the ability to connect to people who with a similar background from me, and the fact that the staff members at the hospital and the support, every, all the support staff at the hospital was also focused with the goal of patient care, it felt like it just all came hammered at home for me. Uh, I see acute injuries on the field. Uh, I see uh, ankle sprains. I see ACL knee injuries, as well as in the clinic. It's very rewarding to see them from on the field injury to rehab to transition back to their event. Well, I've always had an interest in the medical field, and then growing up, I actually went through physical therapy myself for an injury, and that got me back to playing my sports and the activities that I loved. So seeing that firsthand, I got to see how much physical therapy could really benefit others. Welcome back to West Central High School in Bigsville, Illinois. As you're watching Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance coverage of BPC Sports on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH as we get ready for the national anthem, I do believe, as BPC has left the field. They're going down, and they do take a knee at the far end. Now they're going to walk out for the national anthem, I believe. And uh, we'll stand up and let you hear that, if you can hold on to that for I me. I will do that. I'm going to spin the camera back the other way. Try not to do it too fast for you folks at home. But it, the pep band, I believe, is going to play the national anthem. 
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you stand, you gentlemen, please move your cap for the playing of our national anthem by our band, led by Miss Stephanie Manning. Well, I was going to show you the band, but there's too many people, so we'll just... So the national anthem as we get ready to go with Varsity Illinois Eight Man Football Association football live from West Central High School in Biggsville, Illinois. And BPC, we'll take a look at them. They're taking a knee at the far end. Doing a pregame prayer, I do believe. Or at least some words of encouragement. And it looks like the heat will run out through the tunnel at the near end. We'll let you watch that happen as well for your folks that are watching for the West Central heat. <laughs> they, I don't know if that was maybe Cole that came out there and took the, uh, the pylon off the corner of the end zone so nobody tripped over it. Did you see that? Yeah, I did see that. <laughs> I think it was Cole. He was the first one that came out there. Brett's boy, I do believe. I went to school with Brett Cole, actually, when I went to school here in B at uh, Southern. About a minute and 35 seconds, as you can see in the background there, before we get ready for kickoff. And we should have... You ever notice that nobody does starting lineups to speak of anymore? It's just not a big thing no. anymore. It used to be such a big part of the game and pregame celebration and stuff, and the Patriots ran out as a team in the Super Bowl, and it all went away. Yep. yep. Take a look at the far side of the field with the BPC Spartans getting ready for kickoff. Devin Raleigh over there. Looks like he's talking them up, getting ready for the kickoff. And the Heat will be back deep to receive. It's like 81, Cody Wade, a sophomore, going back also. Number 23. That would be Isaiah Stevenson. Stephson. Stephson. My apologies. Live chat's open, folks. Hop in there. Tell us where you're watching from and who you're cheering for. We're hoping this will be a good one. As we get ready to go here from West Central High School in Biggsville, Illinois, you're watching Devin Raleigh. Shelter insurance coverage of BPC Sports on TSSR Game That's Time Live. Presented by MDH. Osma Perelku with the ball on the tee for BPC. And we're just about set for football on this gorgeous Friday night. Deep kick and out of bounds. Clear down at the 10-yard line, but it'll come out to the come out to about the 35, right? Am I right on that? Yeah, I think so. Wind blowing out of the southeast, and the wind kind of pushed that to the near side 
79 degrees at kickoff, feels like 82. And Perfect weather for late September. I don't think it feels like 82. Do I don't think it, think it does like like it either. Just tell you what the app tells me. <laughs> weather apps aren't any more reliable than, than us the looking man, in the sky, right? Than the weatherman, yeah. Switching footballs out, and we'll get ready to go with the first play here from West Central High School. Pete Simpson, the quarterback, coming over to the near side. Now we got the ball situation straightened out, it looks like. I'll take a gander at the football. And I don't like that one, Coach. I want the other one. <laughs> Can't blame him. No. He's the hey, man that's got to handle it. you got to handle it. You want one that you, you like. That's right. I don't blame him. Don't blame him a bit. Here we go. First play. Simpson's going to go under center, single back set. She's showing blitz, and it's going to be a handoff to number two, Gibbs. And he's got a first down and a little more for the Heat on the first play of the game. Cooper Gibbs with a gain of, well, no, they're going to say out of bounds just short, so a gain of nine. Just underway, 11.53 to play, opening quarter. Yeah, good run to start things off. A little inside handoff there, it looked like. And, and flag. I'm going to say somebody lined off off. Nope, off sides on BPC. They've somebody lined up off sides. You're exactly right. But it was the defense, not the offense. Right. <laughs> and that will be a first down by penalty. That's going to move it into not quite into BPC territory. The, knows the football just short of the 50-yard line. Yeah, so technically at the 49, and it's about three inches from the 50. Simpson under center, going to be a handoff first back through, and BPC defense doing a nice job. 23 steps in on the carry. Pierce and Willie on the stop, I do believe. Loss of a yard, second, and we'll call it 10 and a half. Second and 11 for West Central from their own 49-yard line. Same play they ran on first down, and another good gain. Cooper Gibbs on the carry. Going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Down to the BPC 41. Just underway, 10.55 to play here in the opening quarter. This has not been an unusual thing for BPC, giving up some points or a drive on their first uh, defensive series. Head off the first back through, and he breaks tackles, still on his feet, still on his feet, down inside the 25, 23, Stephson on the carry. It is enough for a deep first down. From the 41, take it down to the right at the 25, we'll call it. Gain of 16. It's not a hurry up, but it's a quick up here yeah. for the Heat. So right back to the line again. See if it's in handoff. Number 24, and he got smacked backwards. Nate Kramer on the stop. Xander Anderson on the carry. Gain of a couple on the play. Second down and eight for the Heat. 10-15 to play. Here in the opening quarter, no score. You run into Nate Kramer, you're running into pretty much a brick wall. Yeah, he's a big kid, strong kid, tough kid. Nose for the football for sure. And it's going to be Cooper Gibbs again and maybe a touchdown saving tackle by the jersey for BPC. And Lane Huffman. That was Lane. Playing defense tonight. And that's going to be a first down to about the what, Central 11. Down to the, just outside the 10. Looks like the, maybe the 12, actually. Three first downs so far for West Central. First and 10 from just outside the 10 for West Central. 9.25 to play here in the first quarter. And up the middle and barely touched. It's going to be Stephenson into the end zone. Touchdown, West Central. 
Six nothing, 924 to play here in the opening quarter. You know, that's a drive that West Central put right down BPC's throat, and we said that you can't overlook somebody in the IHFA, and especially a team that's a defending state champion, even if they did lose, lose some of their key players. And they drive it right down the field. BPC is going to have to wake up and yeah, get off the bus, per se. Two-point conversion looks like it's going to be good, and that will be Cooper Gibbs getting to the near corner, and he's in. That'll make it an 8 nothing lead, 9-24 to play here in the opening quarter. I mean, this is going to be interesting to see how BPC responds to this. They've not really had this happen to them thus Since far. Ann. Yeah. So we'll take a break. We'll be back in 30 seconds on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. My experience with McDonough District Hospital was amazing. I have a lot of allergies complicated by nasal problems. And the procedure I had is Vive Air. Dr. Sparks was incredible. The Vive Air procedure is a radiofrequency ablation procedure. She no longer has to do any medications to breathe, so she gets much more restful night's sleep. And a short little office procedure and have somebody that feels like it's totally changed their life means the world. It's a permanent improvement on the quality of your life. Back here at West Central High School, 8 nothing lead for the Heat over BPC, 9.24 to play in the opening quarter. Relku and Thomas back deep for BPC at about their own 20. I just ducked, folks. No, I, I apologize. <laughs> I saw one coming in my face. I can't make out the number. I know there's an eight. Well, five set the ball, so I thought he was kicking. It's going to be a short little kick to Perelku at about the 20. 25, 30, 40. Brought down, I believe, by the kicker, but a good run back from Relku to the BPC 45-yard line. That's where the Spartans will start their first offensive possession of the night. Good run back, and, and Perelku did not hesitate, mm -hmm. right? He took no. right, he got the ball, went right to where the return was supposed to go and took off after it. He sees too much hesitation sometimes at this level <laughs> with kick returners and that was not the case with Barocco. His talent up under center. Single back is Lane Huffman in the backfield. And it's going to be a handoff to Huffman, and he's going to fight forward for a gain of about three. Nice tackle there by number 22 for the Heat. That would be Peyton Woodbury, Jr. And a quick snap. BPC right back to the line of scrimmage. Handoff to Huffman, and he's got some room. He's across the 45 into BP, or West Central Territory. And he's going to have enough for a first down. Steps in on the stop for the Heat. At first and 10 for BPC from the Heat 45 yard line. 8.50 to go here in the opening quarter. Both teams getting well, to the ball quick quickly, aren't they? Yes, they are. Proku and Beekman, the receivers far side. Love under center. Single back again, Lane Huffman. And it's going to be a handoff to the far side. Huffman lowers his shoulder and is going to pick up a good run of about seven or eight on the play. Looks like it's about six, actually. Yeah, we'll call it a gain of six. Pretty long grass down there today, too, if you, if you yeah, walked across the field yes, a little bit. It was quite long. So second down at four for BPC. The ball at the Heat 39-yard line. We're at 8.05 to play in the opening quarter. 8 nothing lead for West Central. BPC is giving a healthy dose of Lane Huffman right now. Going to send Beekman in motion. And it's going to be Huffman again. And Heat front line this time. Nowhere to go for Lane. Wrapped up number 54. Including Cole. Cole. Blake Cole, maybe may a loss of a yard or so on the play, or a couple it looks like. So third down, we'll call it six. Ball back at the West Central 41-yard line. A defensive line on camera right now is a big key of what's going on here for West Central on that play. They were huge on the stop of Lane Huffman on that one. Beekman again in motion. 
Take the hand off. Nope, Beekman's going to get it. It's going to spin out of one tackle. It's going to spin down short of the first down after a gain of a couple on the play. Fourth and four. Fourth and long three for BPC. Seven minutes to play here in the first quarter. BPC going to line up and go for it. Yeah, they're in a position where it's too close to punt, too yep. far to kick. So you go for it here. Beekman and Peroku to the near side. Lane Huffman again, the lone setback behind Talon Love, junior for BPC. Huge down for West Central here if they can get a stop. Love's going to look to throw. The southpaw looks. He's got a man open, and it's tipped and caught by Perelku. And Perelku may go to the house. He will touchdown BPC. 38 yards. It looked like West Central might take it the other way. And uh, off the tip, Perelku into the end zone for BPC. 8-6, to 6, 6.32 to play here in the opening quarter. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Yes. <laughs> and that's one of those times right there. It worked out for BPC. As Perelku, you got to give him credit. He was running. He stopped, waited, and came back to the ball after the tip and got the the uh, reception and the touchdown. Wind it up for two. Out of the shotgun. Love's going to take it. Slips and will not make the goal line. So the two-point conversion fails. 6.32 to play. It's 8-6 in favor of the Heat of West Central. I'd like to thank our hot sponsors this year by County Insurance Agency, Big River Resources West Burlington, County Auto and Trailer Sales, Doran Construction. This game being brought to you tonight in part by JoJo's Gaming Parlor. JoJo's Gaming Pro offers the best gaming experience in the McDonough County area. Stop in for a cold drink and a chance to take home a nice wad of cash while you're at it. Also, on game night, check out the TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH Events live on their big screens. Come join your friends at JoJo's located at 776 North Cole Street in Bushnell. Cheer the Spartans on to victory. Also, Sports Corner at 124, Macomb's original local sports bar is Sports Corner at 124 with a focus on local sports. Catch WIU games and all the area TSSR game time live broadcasts at Sports Corner at 124. All while enjoying your favorite cold drink and some of the best food in West Central Illinois. Stop in and say hi at 124 North Randolph Street in Macomb. Cody Wade and Isaiah Stepson back for the heat. Proku with the ball on the tee at the 40. And a booming kick. This one's going to hit down at the 10. And slipping down to field it is number 81, Cody Wade, on the far side. And the heat going to be set up inside the 10, it looks, inside the 15, it looks like. Yeah, about the 11 or the 12. We'll look here and zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it looks like the 11 or 12-yard line. I, I'll tell you what, you know, you might think, well, man, he should have let that roll or he should have got up before he picked it up. I think catching that ball before it rolled closer to the end zone right. and he had to track it down might have been – uh, the best thing for him to do in that scenario. Yeah, exactly. And wonder, too, with the taller grass that, you know, most fields maybe it would hit and cream into the end zone, but the fall tur tall turf down below, that may not have been the case. So the Heat coming out first and 10 from their own 12. And off to Gibbs again. He breaks one tackle. It's going to get it across the 15, pushed out of bounds at about the 16. Pierce, Taylor Pierce on the stop for BPC. Yeah, gain of five. So they've had a lot of success running the football here against BPC. So second and five for the Heat, 625 to play. First quarter, they lead it by two, eight to six over BPC. Simpson under center. And off first back through, and that is a first down for the Heat. That is number 23 again, Stephson. That's going to be a gain out to about the 25, it looks like. first down. First and 10 from the 30, actually. 29-yard line, we'll call it. And off 
And BBC doing a good job of pursuit that time. There's a late flag. Yeah, that's going to be a face mask on Kramer. Kramer and Chambers on the stop. It's going to be a face mask on Kramer, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Yeah, he kind of a glancing face mask. The five-yard variety. Yeah, he didn't do it on purpose, and he didn't really hold, hardly hold on to it, but he turned his head with it, and that'll get the flag most times out of knot. Going to take it up across the 35 to the 36, 5.55 to play first quarter. Simpson under center again for the heat. First back through, and that is going to be Stepson again. And he's going to get another first down for the Heat. BPC has shown no ability to stop this Heat rushing attack up until this point. It's going to take it out to the 43-yard line. Five thirty-five to play first quarter, 8-6 lead for the Heat. And off first back through, steps in again. Lane Huffman in on the stop again. Gain of four. Second and six for the Heat from the 46, 47, we'll call it 47 yard line, West Central Territory. Nearing the five minute mark here, the opening quarter. Uh, Kramer tried to time the uh, snap and jumped he, a little early. He leveled Stimson, but he was across the line, I believe, just a smidge early. He, he, if he wasn't, he timed it so perfectly that it looked like he was going to be. Right. That'll be another five-yard mark off three penalties for BPC here in this opening quarter for 15 yards. Outside on the Still second down, but second in about a yard now. Getting a gorgeous full orange moon coming up to our east. See that in the shot there. So second and about one for West Central. The ball now on the BPC side of the 50 yard line up there, 49. 428 to play first quarter. An 8-6 lead for West Central. All eight BPC defenders within a couple yards, and there's the first pass of the game, and he had him probably open. That was Peyton Woodbury, the intended receiver. You know, I was just getting ready to save. The reason why I was pointing out that there was eight, yep. all eight men were that close to the line of scrimmage is that they were just sucking them into the, the line, line to throw the to ball, throw the throw, ball yep. over the top of them, and that's what they tried to do right there, almost on cue. So that'll stop the clock with 4.18 to play here in the first quarter. Huffman was back in coverage, though. If it had been a good pass, I don't think he could have done much with it, but he was there and made the tackle probably if it would have been caught. I mean, handoff first back through. It's going to have the first down, but only a couple okay, on the play. On the 44, Ethan Pierce. Brought down by Ethan Pierce and Carter Chambers. Carter Chambers, 55 on the stop. First down. Down near the four minute mark, 8 6. Favor West Central again. First and 10 West Central from the BPC 46. They're going to get Kramer again. I don't For, know that um, he, he, he drew, he forced him to jump. I don't know if he, he never went across, but he forced him to jump, and that's going to do it. Bring up first and five. So first and five for West Central now. 3.53 to play. Ball at the BPC 41. Simpson under center. Hand off. We'll lead back. Nope. That's going to be Gibbs, and he's going to 
Uh, Corey Gibb, Cooper Gibb, I'm sorry, and he was brought down for a loss of about a yard or so. Chambers back there, and Willie was the first one back there, I think. So big third, second down now, second and call it seven. 3-10 to play here in the opening quarter. Now BPC, Kramer blit, faked the blitz and stepped back and got the end on the far side. That was Gibb to uh, move, so a false start oh, on the heat. Ooh, and back it goes. Second and about 11 now. So the five yards they gave up, they get back, and it's second and 11. So yeah, that's the first time. It, it almost looks like they're playing cat and mouse now. BPC's got three or four players right. trying to do that, trying to draw the right. motion from the heat. So now the Heat have to be, you know, very diligent in what they're doing and uh, not allow the Spartans movement to make them flinch or jump. Hand off first back through. And he's going to get most of that back and then some out to the 40. Bring up third and four. Stepson again on the carry, and it's been a heavy, good combination between him and Gibb thus far for West Central. The moon's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Gorgeous night here in West Central, Illinois. Third down and four. Ball right at the 40 of BPC. Two big, minutes to play. Big set of downs for BPC, and they didn't get the stop. And that would be Stepson again. And he's going to take it inside the 35 to the 34. Kramer on the stop for BPC. We're down to a minute 50 to play. And a quickly played opening quarter, 8-6 in favor of West Central. The lead back and still on his feet. Finally brought down the ball loose, and West Central going to fall on the football. That was Stepson on the carry. Yeah, and he was well past the line of scrimmage. And that ball bounded about three yards or two yards back behind it. And uh, BPC in that instance actually is lucky it wasn't blown dead. Yeah. Because they looked like they had him pretty well stood up. But he kind of bounced outside at the last second. I think probably right below, right before the whistle was getting ready to blow, and it kind of bit the heat a little bit, but luckily they were able to recover it. Second down and about 12 now. They hand off number 24 on the carry, and a nice stop over there by number 44, Ethan Pierce. Xander Anderson on the carry, and he's going to lose another yard. Called third and 13 as we're down to 40 seconds to play here in the opening quarter, 8-6 in favor of West Central. That's right. I gave Chambers the credit. It was Pierce on that big tackle earlier behind the line of scrimmage. 44, not 55. Had the double number, just the wrong double number. Right. Down to 25 seconds. Probably the final play of the opening quarter coming up here. Third and 12. That's going to hand off to Kibb. And we got a flag in the backfield, defensive backfield. Is he going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 30? That's going to be holding, I do believe. Find the white hat. Clock stopped with 12.4 seconds to play. And that is the case. We will get one more play of the at least in this first quarter. So replaying third down. And that's going to be a third. And a long. 22. Clock. The clock will start there. Stop. Stay stopped. Nope. It stays stopped. So there will be one more. Moving back to the BPC 46. And it is going to be third down at 22. And it's going to be, I think, Stepson on the carry. 
Yeah, Willie yeah. and, and uh, Pierce again. Going to set up a fourth and about 15 as we get ready to head to the second quarter, 8-6 in favor of the Heat of West Central. We'll be back after this on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. Working at MDH feels special to me because I'm also from a small community like MDH, and I love to be able to care for communities like this and be able to give them high standards of excellence with medical care as possible. You know, some people like to take more of a medical approach to their care. Some people like to take more of a holistic and I just want to be able to make their plan of care as individualized as possible. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. And welcome back here to West Central High School. And sorry, folks, yeah, Xavier Patterson, it wasn't 6-0. to zero. It was actually 8-6. to six. As we try to get, I doing several things here, and I may or may not have forgot to uh, update the scoreboard. So I apologize. Kevin Matthews watching from Bushnell. Benny Skadu. I hope I said that right. Skadudo. Says let's go Spartans. Jerry Walters watching from Prairie City. Obviously Xavier Patterson watching as well. So it's a fourth and 14 for West Central's. We switch ends. And again, this is kind of the similar situation, right? Too close to punt. Yep. Too close, too far to kick if you have a kicker. And a look to throw. He's got a man open, and it's going to be underthrown by about five or six yards. The pass broken up by Beekman for BPC. Intended receiver was 22, Stepson, or actually 23, Peyton Woodbury. So BPC is going to set up first and 10 from their own 39-yard line, it looks like. That 10-yard uh, holding penalty looms large right now. Yeah, it did. So Spartans, their second offensive possession of the contest, going to come out with two receivers, that will be Perelku and Beekman near side. Lane Huffman, alone set behind Talon Love. Huff going to hand off to Huffman. He gets by the first man, and he's going to – Nice gain as he got the corner. There's good pursuit by number 81. Cody waiting for West Central, and it's going to be a gain of seven. Gage Stimson ended up making the tackle out there, but uh, it was 81 that pushed him to the boundary and allowed Stimson to get there. So second and three for BPC, 11-20 to play here in the opening quarter, or opening half, I should say, 8-6 in favor of West Central. Both teams scoring on their opening possessions of the contest. This is just the second one for BPC. Two receivers again, Beekman and Perelku far side. Going to fake the handoff to Huffman. Little dump pass over the hand. Oh, nice attempt as 42. Tanner Pierce open out here. And we saw a lot of that last week, Dwayne, where Pierce kind of got into the passing game on uh, several occasions for BPC. Yeah, and that was a relatively good pass considering the pressure that was immediately in the face of Talon Love. He was dropping back, threw off his back foot, and still was able to get it close to Pierce. Pierce has got a hand on it, but couldn't bring it in. Uh, offensive line obviously need to make give him at least a step or two you know, to set and throw, and that's probably a first down. Third down and three for BPC. 11 minutes, 11.01 to play here in the first half. We got all sorts of movement up front by BPC. It looked like Love maybe. Looking to the sideline, I don't know if Beekman was supposed to be in motion on that play. I think that was a everybody but the center kind of deal right, right. there because so everybody moved and the center didn't snap it. Five penalties now on BPC in the contest for 25 yards. So it'll be from third and eight, to, uh, third and three to third and eight. Penalties uh, played a big role in this game, really. They have. I mean, it kind of helped the Heat get down the field to fir their first drive, and then it hurt the Heat on their second one. Now BPC's shooting itself in the foot here. So third and eight for BPC, 10.45 to play. Beekman in motion this time to the near side. Love's going to hand off to Huffman. Lost his footing now, cut back, and he's got some room across the 50, 40, 
He may go, he will go. Touchdown, BPC, no flags. 59 yards for Lane Huffman. And that is what Lane Huffman offers, right? You keep feeding him the ball, you keep feeding him the ball. He's got the speed, he's got the strength, and sooner or later he breaks one, and that's what happened there. And it wasn't, it wasn't the initial defense of the Heat that caused the problem. It was the backside defense that didn't stay home. And how many times have we said that for Lane Huffman cutting back against the grain and abusing the over-pursuit on the backside? And a heck of a – yeah, just a heck of a run. He almost lost his footing about a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage on the play. And it still managed to keep his feet. And looks like BPC going to go for two with Huffman the lone setback. Love out of the shotgun this time. Love on the – Snap, direct run, just quarterback keeper, nowhere to go. So with 10.30 to play, it's a 12-8 lead in favor of BBC. See if we can get a picture of the BPC cheerleaders over there. Jeffrey Thompson says, watching while they harvest corn. Well, thank you for joining us. We're happy we can bring it to you. This game being brought to you tonight in part by Pond Plus. Pond Plus is proud to have served Macomb and the surrounding area for over 20 years, providing cash for most items of value. Pond Plus is the area's largest seller of used items, including firearms. They also provide on-site jewelry repair and are open 9 to 5 Monday through Saturday. They have a great selection of jewelry, electronics, tools, and video games located at 324 West Jackson Street in Macomb between Erico and Taco Bell. Wade and Stepson back for the Heat. Taco with the ball on the tee again for BPC. Broke the approach, a knuckleball kick fielded off the hands by Wade, and he's across the 30, out to about the 35-yard line. Make a nice run out of that mishandled kick. Hey, I remember to update the scoreboard this time. All right, Xander Jones on the stop for BPC. See if we can get any area scores around the area. Uh, it doesn't look like anything has updated yet. I bet if you went to Hewlett Public Pro LLC's YouTube channel, you could probably get you some could look at the scores that we're carrying anyway. Absolutely, and you see the Amboy, the Amboy score. That'd be nice to see. So first and ten, West Central from their own thirty-six. Looks like just maybe a straight-ahead quarterback keeper. Yep, it was. And he's going to. Gain about four on the play. First carry for Simpson on the night. So second and six for the Heat, right out 10 minutes to play here in the first half. And off, gonna be number 23, steps in again. Looks like he might have enough for a first. No, no he's going to be gonna short. Just short. So third and less than one. To the 45-yard line. 12 carries for 68 yards for Stepson here in the first half. Twelve eight nine fifteen remaining here in the first half. Second quarter action from West Central High School in Bigsville, Illinois. Simpson under center. And he's just going to keep it, and he's got a big push. He's going to gain almost five yards on the quarterback keeper right up the middle. I feel like I'm watching the Philadelphia Eagles with the tush push. Right, right. Ball right at the midfield stripe at the 50-yard line. I'll tell you what, if you can't figure out how to stop that dive, they're going to do that all game long. Yeah, they and will. Just eat clock and move it down the field. Yep. 8.55 and counting here. 12-8 lead in favor of BPC. They are dominating the line of scrimmage right now. That is for certain. Are the West Central Heat. A 
handoff. That's going to be Stephson again. BPC doing a fairly good job that time. Kramer was the first one to meet him, I do believe. Stood him up and then got some help from some other white jerseys. Gain of three. Second and seven for West Central. Now in BPC territory at the 46. 8-12 to play, first quarter, first half, 12-8 in favor of BPC. A little misdirection handoff by West Central. BPC doing a good job, maybe a gain of a one on the play. That was number 24, Anderson. Xander Jones and De Tal Talon Love coming up to make the stop. Third down and about five, the nose of the football right at the BPC 45. We've talked about it several times that when Huffman's running the ball, but the backside defense has to stay home. Right. And Love did a great job of that in, on that particular play. That hand off up the middle and a big push and still on his feet. That was steps and he darn near broke that one. And I missed a part of it too. Nate Kramer and 44, Ethan Pierce, and that's going to be run all the way down to the 30, a gain of 15 for Stepson. Keeping your feet pumping, keeping your legs moving, and, and getting down the field, and it worked. First and 10 the heat. from the BPC 30. It's going to be Gibb on the carry this time, and he's going to be slammed down on the far side by Carter Chambers, I believe. Gibb's going to gain yep, it was Chambers. three. And Talon Love was over there as well. 6.45 to play here in the opening half. 12-8 in favor of BPC. Second and seven from the Spartan, 27 for the Heat. But again, no penalties for the Heat on this drive, and they've just continually moved yep. it down the field. Oh, what a jump step. Yep, yep. and BPC doing a good job of wrapping up this time. Beekman and Jones and others there that time. Gain of a couple on the play, so third down and three. Obviously, four down territory here if you're the Heat. Nearing the six minute mark, 6.03 to play in the first half. See Beekman going out and Huffman coming back for BPC. And we're going to get a timeout, I believe, West Central. Coach Kirby, yes, we do. 5.46 to play. Uh -huh. Here in the opening half, first time out for West Central. Say Trail BPC by four, 12 to eight. We'll take a break and be right back in about 30 seconds on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. And welcome back. Want to say hi to Ronnie Baca and Grandma E watching from Marietta. We've got some people walk, watching from all over the place here tonight, so that's nice. Now, third down, and I was going to say they had the down marker at fourth down. No, it is third down at about three. Now, Stepson going to bounce it outside, and he's going to have enough for a first down. Talon Love on the stop after a gain of about four. Stepson gets him another first down just inside the 20. 16 carries now, 92 yards for Stepson in the opening half. Yeah, he's been a workhorse for sure, and – and, you know, they're finding the recipe to move the ball mm -hmm. against BPC, yep. right? They're just pounding it right up the middle and then occasionally bouncing it outside to keep them honest or throw a pass occasionally. And 
it's working to perfection right now pretty much. And off, and nice backside tackle this time. And maybe going to have somebody shake. That was at uh, 44. Ethan Pierce. Ethan Pierce. Steps in on the carry, gain of a couple on the play. Seventeen carries now, ninety-four yards for the senior for West Central. Four forty-eight to play, first half. Second and seven for West Central from the BPC fifteen. All the alumni with classes ended in three and eight. That's gonna be a handoff against Stepson. We got a penalty flag on the far side. Stepson dragging people. Finally, body slammed down by Nate Kramer near the goal line, but I think we're going to possibly move this one back on a hold. Wait and see what the... Uh... No nope, legal shift on West Central. That's going to negate about a 14-yard run. Yeah, Coach Kirby's asking uh, who was moving. And again, the penalty breaks up a big play for the Heat. So second down and 12 now. The ball moved out to the BPC 15-yard line. 4-15 to play. First half. I think BPC might have been off sides right there. Kim, and we got a flag again. As Gibbs going to take it down close to the first down, but we got a flag in the backfield. One number two hit the other number two there, made the tackle, but I think it's going to be offsides on BPC and decline probably. No, oh, they call holding. a hold. Never mind. I saw a Spartan jump on the far side over there. It looked to me like they might have been offsides, and uh, BPC got bailed out a little bit right there, it looked like. And again, penalties. Are caught hurting drives again for West Central. Just a huge penalty there for West Central facing a third down already, and then they, you know, they had two downs to get ten. Now they got two downs to get twenty-one. Ball at the twenty-five. Oh, ball actually at the thirty. That's going to be second or third, second down, and about twenty-five. Twenty. Three or four, technically, I think. They're not quite down to 15. Maybe they are at the 15. Yeah, that's pretty close They're to They're inside 25. the 10. Yeah, that's pretty They first yeah. down. Let me hand off the outside. That's Gibbs on the uh, far side. And he's going to pick up a good chunk of yardage there on the play. Got to give him credit. He did what he needed to do. He got as much as he could, and then he dove forward to get as much extra as he could. Still going to be longer than 10 yards, more about fourth and 15 still. For the Heat here with 3.15 remaining in the first half. Third down and 15. Okay, so it wasn't third down before. No. It was second. I wondered. I They've had the down marker a couple of times. We've had some issues with the. Maybe so it's not working. Third and 15 as we hit three minutes to play in the opening half. Second and 25 is not there. Uh, BPC, now BPC offsides again. And that would be, that's Ethan Pierce. Pierce. Penalty's really hurting both teams thus far in the opening half. And now it becomes third and ten. Sixth penalty on BPC here in the opening half. Quarterback Simpson coming to the near side to talk it over with Coach Kirby. 2.48 to play. 12-8 in favor of BPC. Back judge got the count on. I'm not sure beep, they're going to get it off. They barely get it off. Hand off to Stepson. He's still on his feet. He's going to be inside the 10. Well, they overcame the penalties, didn't they, with a they little did. help from BPC. and. Hundred and two yards now for Stepson in the opening half. 
So first and goal for the Heat from the BPC six. They trail by four, 12 to eight. And off steps in, and he's going to slide into the end zone. Touchdown, West Central. That makes it a two-point lead for West Central now, 14 to 12. Chance to make it a four-point lead here. Score coming with 159 to play in the opening half. So 14-12, pending the extra point attempt, the two-point conversion for West Central. Hit Simpson under center. And we're going to get a 21 jumping offside. He, it almost looked like he thought it was first sound, didn't he? All right, Hunter Schrader. Over on the uh, far side. So that'll move the extra point attempt back to about the eight. Get a timeout here. I was going to say, no signal. Oh, Coach Kirby's okay. already in the huddle with West Central. So that's their second timeout. So 159 to play BPC. Now trails West Central by two, 14 to 12. I think that uh, Coach Kirby believes that somebody made a sound or is replicating the snap count because he instantly went right to the kid that jumped and uh, went right to the official after he talked to him. So right. that tells me that he's thinking somebody's replicating the count, snap count, which you weren't at, but we saw Macomb get called for that in a game against West Hancock really? as well. So. Uh, that is illegal to do, and it looked like to me, you know, I don't. Obviously, I'm not in the huddle, but I would guess that that might exactly be what he's talking about because there's been a whole lot of jumping right. here in this. on both sides. Yeah, and uh, Coach Kirby understands the game pretty well and, and knows his kids really right. well, you know. And it's so I have to ask him about that if I remember when he comes up after the game. So Simpson under center again for the Heat. Going to hand off. Nope, going to look to throw. He's got a man open, and it's going to be short. Town love there to break it up. So it's going to be a two-point lead for West Central with 1.59 to play here in the first half. BPC 159 to play and three timeouts here. Going in a quickly played first half. Yeah, it's been quick. This game being brought to you by Heil Enterprises and Heil Trucking. They can take your product down the road near or far and also offers top-notch heavy-duty truck and trailer repair. The second-generation business continues to grow and continues to support BPC Athletics. Stop by and see Danny, John, or Travis on Route 41 south of Prairie City. Or call them at 309-775-3333. And Rosie's Pizza. Rosie's Pizza offers something for everyone with pasta, sandwiches, and, of course, pizza. Dine in or carry out at 458 East Main Street in Bushnell. They also deliver to Good Hope Adair and all points in between for delivery. Call 309-772-2101. As we get ready for the kickoff, and I was taking evasive me measures again. again to keep from getting hit in the head by a flying football. Stepson to kick it off for the Heat. Prelku and Thomas back deep for BPC. Squib kick, and BPC's going to get it right at midfield. Nice job by Parker Guppy of getting on that football. Well, I like the idea to some extent, but at the same time, BPC gets the football in the first and the second half. Right. And if they can march this down now and get a touchdown, it's a two possessions in a row kind of deal for BPC and two touchdowns in a row in a game that neither team's been able to stop the other one very much makes it difficult. So a minute 59 to play. First and 10 for BPC. I sent Huffman out, empty setback in the shotgun as Love or Huffman and then now in motion. Love's going to take the snap, quick pitch to Huffman, and that play is getting blown up as he gets buried back at the 45 yard line, number 22. 
Peyton Woodbury on the stop. And number five was there as well. Timeout, charge to BPC. 145 to play. I'm not sure. 100% sure that that's the time or place to try that, that no, play. No, you've had good success with Lane running the football thus far. They're still trying to throw a new wrinkle at West Central, but uh, stick with a horse that you've ridden with all year long on the back of number one. As BPC... And we said this is, you know, you wonder why you take a time out here. You don't want to give the ball back to West Central. This is a big set of downs for BPC. Because yes. you score here and could get something out of that opening drive of that second half. That is a big, big deal for the Spartans. Yeah, it gives them the, you know, advantage, as you would say in tennis, right? Right. You, you, your, your deuce or your advantage. Right, right now they're kind of deuce. If they get uh, a touchdown here, they suddenly have the advantage. Going to go shotgun, Huffman next to Love in the backfield. Going to fake the handoff, and Love under all sorts of pressure. Going to step up. Nice move across the 45. Uh, they're going to get Beekman on a block, a legal block. As he, and Love's still on his feet down to the 25-yard line. I totally missed that play, folks. I apologize. I thought he pitched it on the fake pitch to Huffman. And Beekman got I don't know. That was real, real close, whether that was a good clean block or not. It did exactly what they wanted it to. It uh, it faked out somebody. It just maybe didn't fake out the right person. Personal foul. Well, so much for momentum now as BPC it's going to be moved all the way back to their own 39-yard line. Second and 34-yard line. 34-yard line. They moved it back another five. They've got to get all the way down to the West Central 40. Again, four down. You figure four, or three more chances at this. You don't have to get it all right here with a minute 25 to play. Clock is running after the penalty. Beekman and Peralku far side. Up on the lone setback with Love. I was going to look to throw. All sorts of pressure again. Looks downfield. has got a man wide open. That's Beekman in the middle of the field across the 45. 50. Cuts back. Still on his feet and going to go down at the 47 in West Central Heat territory. And 57 timeout. seconds down. BPC going to take their second timeout here of the half. Got a big chunk of it back right there. And Beekman kind of hung underneath the coverage. They sent some, some receivers deep. Beekman hung underneath and got the wide open catch, and he'll be giving the Spartans a much more convertible third down here, a third and about seven. 57.1 seconds to play. West Central on top by two, 14, 14 to 12. Pretty good first half of football. Yeah, very exciting. Outside of the two defenses, not doing a very good job of stopping the other the offense. Uh, you know, it's it's the, you say that, and we got a 14-12 game. Right. Usually, you say that, and it's 36 <laughs> 30, to 34 right. at halftime. Right. But it's just been two teams just methodically driving the ball down the field. Well, I shouldn't say it. BPC did a little bit of that, and then a 59-yard touchdown run for for Huffman. So big. Third down, third and seven for BPC. Spartans with one timeout remaining. Three receivers all to the near side. Now this makes you wonder what BPC is going to do here. Love, shotgun, going to take the snap. Looks to throw. He's got a man open. It's Huffman. Huffman with a catch inside the 20 and out of bounds for BPC. First down, Spartans. Huffman came all the way across the field to catch that ball. So that means Huff, that means that Love had some time. He was over here as the third receiver on the near side, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, yes, he was. So you're going to mark it down almost to the 15. So 32 yards on the pass play from Love to Huffman. Yeah, big play there for BPC, and the ball is the clock is stopped with BPC and Huffman getting out of bounds there. 
One 40, timeout yep. remaining for BPC. 49.6 seconds to play. Spartans trail it by two, 14 to 12. And there goes single backs. And a handoff. Beekman. Beekman's going to look to throw. He's got a man open. It's Pierce in the end zone. Touchdown, BPC. Nope, out of bounds. Out of bounds at the one. Oh, Pierce was – he had plenty of room to get in, too, and he just stepped out early. He's never going to hear the end of that if they score this touchdown. He's going to hear that all week at school next week for stepping out early as he had plenty of room to get in. He just stepped out a little early. It's a first and goal at the one for BPC. And actually mark it back at the two, it looks like. 44 seconds to play. BPC again with one timeout remaining. Going to send Peroku far side. Beekman going to come in and play at the end on the far side. Huffman the lone set back. Shotgun handoff, Huffman. Huffman's going to be brought down back at the 10-yard line. BPC is going to have to take their time out here. 37, now they stop it with 36.8 seconds to play. Okay, now, you know, we, we talk about Huffman cutting back a lot and doing a lot of things for his team. Right there is one of the times that you don't cut back, right? right. You, you, you run straight to your hole and you take whatever you can get or what, right. little, whatever you can't get, but you don't give up ground. And he gave up a bunch right there, about eight, and it's going to bring up second and goal at the 10. 36.8 seconds to play. Now BPC out of timeouts here. Trailing by two, first half, 14 to 12 in favor of the Heat. Well, you see, we've seen this before, right? I mean, on the other side of the field, really. Last year at the semifinal game, the Heat had four seconds left, right. 26 yards out, and they give it to their to their star the running back, and, and he gets them in to, in, and into the state championship game. You've, you've got at least time to run two plays here. No matter, you know, you're in, you're close. You're not going to send anybody down the field. You right. can run the ball at least twice here if you want to. So that's going to be the key here is what does BPC want to do? Looks like there's a little confusion coming out of the timeout. You don't want that. That's for darn sure. Broke the sole receiver to the far side. Love on this shotgun. Again, Huffman going to line up to his right. Snap. Love's going to look to throw. Right out of the pocket. He's got a man open. Back of the end zone, it's Beekman. Beekman and Pirelku both there, and it's Beekman that's going to come down with the football for BPC. Touchdown, Spartans. 11 yards. Beekman got it came out of nowhere as Pirelku was the man that I saw open in the back of the end zone, and Beekman with the touchdown for BPC makes it an 18-14 to lead for the Spartans. Well, never mind. Forget what I said. <laughs> They have had receivers open. You have to give them that. Smart's going to line it up for two. Broca's going to come near side this time. Huffman going to line up to the left of Talon Love. Snap. Fake the handoff. Looks to throw off the back foot. He's got a man open in the end zone. That is a touchdown. Perelku, or the two-point conversion to Perelku. As good as he had Pierce and Perelku on the corner. And that makes it a six-point lead for BPC, 20 to 14, 30.4 seconds to play here in the first half. Big possession for BPC right there as the Spartans get the ball first in the second half. So that becomes a huge, huge deal as they move forward here. They get the two-point conversion. And it also makes it a two-point conversion needed or a one-point conversion needed for the Heat if they score again, yep. too. Six-point lead for BPC at 20 to 14. Let's see, Stephson and Wade back again for West Central. Broke is going to tee it up at his own 40. Thirty point four seconds to go in the first half, so the Heat still have time to make something happen here. Oh, I don't know what happened with that kick. Is it the ball directly boy. out of bounds at the, about the forty? The ball boy right there picked it up, folks. 
I wonder if that was supposed to be some sort of an onside kick that just didn't onside. Didn't, didn't go onside. Well, it went onside right on the West Heat, West Central Heat side. <laughs> right. We'll try to bring you the classes of the end in three and eight walking on the field here tonight. I believe that's what they said they are going to do. We'll try to show you those folks. So the Heat going to get it at their own 45 with 30.4 seconds left. I believe the Heat still have one timeout remaining as well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, both coaches trying to do something a little outside the norm there, and I don't know if I agree with either one of them. But Going to be a handoff to Gibb. He's still on his feet. Now that stuffs and faked me out. He's got enough for West Central first down into BPC territory at the 44. And he gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 23.5 seconds to play. It's a first down. The clock will start again when he gets – Chain set, and he spikes it to stop the clock with 18 seconds exactly on the clock. 120 yards on 20 carries for Stepson in this opening half for West Central. You'll take six yards of carry, won't you? Uh, every day <laughs> and on Sunday. You do the math there, that'll get you a first down most times. <laughs> I think, right? Well, about one every two, uh, every two carries there. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can do six plus six as well. <laughs> 18 seconds to play here in the first half. West Central first and 10 for the BPC 40. Four-yard line, or second and 10, I should say. Six-point lead for the Spartans, 20 to 14. Stevens going to look to throw. Or Simpson, he's got a man open, and he's brought down Lane Huffman. Nope, that would be Perelku that saved the touchdown. <laughs> 12 seconds to play, first and 10 for the Heat from the 10-yard line. I think they'll spike it again here. And they do with 7.7 .7 seconds to play. Well, I told you there was still time to do some stuff. I loved it, and I still question that kick. I don't know if it, like you said, maybe if it was supposed to be an onside kick or he just broke it. Just we have Had not seen him kick. miss one no, like that all year. No, not at all. So this is big here. 7.7 .7 seconds left. He still with one timeout remaining. And a handoff steps in. And he's brought down short of the goal line. Timeout West Central, their final of the first half with 2.9 seconds to play. He wasn't that close to the goal line. He's near the 10, it looks like to me, in between the 10 and the I 5 I thought he somewhere. went further than that and then bounced back, but he is on the far side, and my eyesight's not the best. I couldn't see him in the lens of the camera, to be honest with you. I, you could probably tell that by the way I was following the ball. I knew it was there somewhere, but I just couldn't see where he was at. So 2.9 seconds. This is probably the last play of the half here, and West Central trying to get back to Deuce here, right? Yeah. If they can uh, get a touchdown here and get back to even and BPC will have the ball first, so they'll get the first chance to retake a lead. But I'll tell you what, if West Central can somehow punch this into the end zone, it's a huge, huge momentum, momentum swing, swing yes. for them. So third down and eight for West Central from the eight. And the Spartans up by six, 20 to 14, 2.9 seconds to play. He's looking to throw, looks, and the incomplete pass. 24, the intended receiver, Anderson, and that's going to end the opening half, 20 to 14 in favor of BPC. Great moon and a great football game thus far here at uh, West Central High School. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH right after this. All right, Coach Border is going to come up and chat for a minute, it looks like. After my appointment that day, I just made up my mind that I'm going to have my baby here in Macomb <laughs> and this hospital because irrespective of where you're from, who you are, it's just their line of duty to make sure they give care, make you comfortable. And I told them about the staff of MDH, you know, they are, they are all good. And you will get all the support you need. This is just the best place for you. Your family. 
Coach uh, Borders here at halftime, 20 to 14 in favor of the Spartans. And uh, you know, penalties were a big issue for both squads there in that first half. But uh, really, kind of that one touchdown drive for West Central, we kind of just kind of helped helped them out too many times. Yeah, we're in a dogfight here. Um, we knew coming in, being their homecoming, you know, they're not the defending state champs for anything, you know, and you know. They have a great coaching staff. We knew coming in here we was going to be in for a dogfight, and that's exactly what we're in right now. Yeah, and a little too exciting there at the end of the first half, but uh, a big swing there that you guys capitalized there in the first half, get up by six, and now with a chance to really swing some momentum your way in that with that second half kickoff. Yeah, we were actually just talking about that, getting that stop there, because if we let them score, momentum swings back to them. Right now we get the ball back in the second half, and, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak it into existence, but our offense has been pretty good so far tonight. So so that we're going to hope to you know lean on that here to begin the second half. Uh, all right, Coach, we'll let you get down with the guys. Thanks for stopping by here at halftime. Coach Jeff Borders stopping by here at halftime with the Spartans on top by 6, 20 to 14. You can see the dance team out doing their thing for the West Central Heat. And, and uh, you know, that's a this is, a as Coach Borders said, this is a dogfight. Yeah. BPC didn't maybe expect this to be this i think the coaches did but i don't know if the players did yeah and you kind of saw that maybe as a as a half went along right bpc seemed to the team at the players themselves seemed to kind of come to life a little bit yep. more didn't they i mean they got more physical they started running a little harder it's like maybe at the first they thought well this team's one and four right we don't have to play as hard but they learned pretty quickly that i think they do yeah and they they did and Good half offensively for Talon Love. Five of six passing, 115 yards and two touchdowns for BPC. Some other stats. Uh, you look at the amount of plays, uh, West Central, quite a bit more plays in that opening half than BPC. Lane Huffman, uh, six carries for 74 yards and a touchdown. Brock Meekman, the only other carry for two yards. Town Love had a couple of good runs, but unfortunately called back due to penalties. Uh, Beekman, three, two catches for 30 yards and a touchdown. Pierce, one for 15. Huffman, one catch for 32 and a touchdown. And Perelku, one catch for 38 and a touchdown for BPC. Yep. For Go ahead. West Central, uh, Stepson, Isaiah Stepson, 20 carries, 120 yards. He's got a couple of touchdowns. Gabe Simpson, two carries for nine. Cooper Gibb, uh, seven carries for 44. And Xander Anderson, three carries for three yards. Simpson, 0 of 1 passing in the opening half for West Central, 20 to 14 in favor of the Heat here at halftime at West Central High School. Well, they got a few people from a class of 1978 here. They're going to walk down this way. I think we'll try to show some of them here. So they're going to walk down. It's going to be hard for us to show anybody, I think, just because of well, where. Best class ever, the <laughs> class of 1983, graduating from Southern is Sarah hartman Wexler. This is actually not a bad idea. You know what I'm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of neat to see the different classes come. Graduating from the class of 1988 from Southern, Kathy Brown Class of 88. That was my. From the class of 1993, from Union, is Eric Craig. There's a lot of people here for not being any more from these classes here. Right. Cameron Hand, Shani Hasby, 
DJ Kelly, Lisa Bowman Knapp, and Janelle Zilke Young. A lot of people from that class. From 93, this would be their 30th class reunion, so that would probably be the reason why. From the class of 2003, from Union, Amy Chandler. I'm sorry, 98, so the 25th class reunion. Mark DeGames, Sean Lane, and Brandy Smith. Halftime score from Amboy, or from Milledgeville, Amboy 16, Milledgeville 6. Oh. From the West Central class of 2008, Jonathan Arnold. I think that uh, might Ryan. surprise some people. I'm surprised by the Bob score Ryan. and the low scoring, Ryan and uh, I'd say I'd definitely give the Milledgeville a little more of an edge at home. Ashley Hawk. Terry Wallace, Brittany Grafton Jack, Erin White McKenna, Brittany Fox Smith, and Alex McCraw. Now the kids are sitting here, so we may not be able to see these folks as well as they. Ashley Huss, I know her dad, Carl. I've known Ashley for quite a while. Donnie and McGee's the West niece, class cousin. Of 2013, Montana Hurts Applegate. Maria Reyes Bigger, Amanda Brockett, Abby Hubbard, Allie Bundy Johnson, Madison Newberry, Cody Reinhold, and Brett Taylor. And last from the class of 2018 West Central is Sorry, folks. The one little girl just keeps getting right up in the shot there. The furthest traveled is Miriam Rutson. She traveled all the way from Florida. And the biggest class in the tennis, and the guess of this, but it's an educated guess, would be the U.S. Central class of 2008. Thank you to everyone for coming out. The silent option It's like McComb to on top of Farmington 8 6 at the break. That's a bit surprising that as well. That is a little surprising. Now the West Central High School marching band will perform. So now we got the marching band coming out, I do believe. Knoxville on top of Illini West, 23 to six at the half. Who was that, I'm sorry, Knoxville? Knoxville 23, Illini West six. Mercer County 20, Elmwood six at the half. And that looks like that's gonna do it for scores. We're getting a lot of Iowa scores over here closer to the river. What, uh, what about South Fulton? Did you look on our page to, did you look I'm on our I'm getting there, I was jumping back and forth and. So we're at the half, 20 to 14. Spartans lead over the Heat. They will get the ball first, will the Spartans, to start the second half. We'll take a break and come back with that South Fulton score. You got it? You got it. Rebels 24, Princes 20 in the second half. Well, look at that. That's a surprise. That ball, a, lot of, that game. a lot of surprising scores yeah. tonight. The and game. It looks like South Fulton maybe just with an interception. That was the Rebels with it. Uh, interception return or decent run back. So look at that. That would be a surprise to a lot of people, I think, as well. But South Fulton, I think, getting a little bit better as the year goes along. We'll take our first break of the half, and we'll be back in just a few minutes on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. 
It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community, uh, and I'm from a farm family, and ultimately I always wanted to practice in a place like that, and I felt that I had uh, the ability to connect to people who with a similar background from me, and the fact that the staff members at the hospital and the support, every, all the support staff at the hospital was also focused with the goal of patient care, it felt like it just all came hammered at home for me. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential, with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. I grew up in a small town in Missouri and I like the feel of community. I like knowing the people that I take care of and knowing the people around me. Providing care for someone that you know is in this community and helping them to get better. I chose physical therapy because I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field. Um, I wanted to be able to help patients in some way re uh, related to uh, more in depth. We get to know our patients and that's really uh, what kind of sets us apart. When my parents told me they'd be using Adam's experts, I felt a bit replaced. I mean, they always called me to remove their viruses or get their printer connected to Wi-Fi. He even set up their new Roku. How do I adopt a new son? <laughs> <laughs> but then he taught me a few things. And now, we're like tech brothers. Adams Experts, repair, maintenance, and setup for all your home technology needs. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. My experience with McDonough District Hospital was amazing. I have a lot of allergies complicated by nasal problems. And the procedure I had is Vive Air. Dr. Sparks was incredible. The Vive Air procedure is a radio frequency ablation procedure. She no longer has to do any medications to breathe, so she gets a much more restful night's sleep. And a short little office procedure and have somebody that feels like it's totally changed their life means the world. It's a permanent improvement on the quality of your life. And welcome back here to West Central High School, 20 to 14 in favor of the Spartans from Bristol Prairie City. Homecoming for West Central here on this picture. Perfect. I don't think you could draw up a better evening weather-wise than tonight here in West Central Illinois. Chris Rankhauser and Dwayne Hill here on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. About a minute 25 on the clock, but I would fully expect we'll get the uh, extra time put on as we usually see at halftime. Exciting and quickly played first half. We can run down our scoring summary again. Moon's so bright it won't even focus on it. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. It's and, and we couldn't be in better position. Look, it's almost the moon almost at midfield. Yeah, just a little bit. Just past a little it. to the south of the 50-yard uh, line here. It was West Central on top, 8-6 at the end of the opening quarter. It was Isaiah Stepson with 11-yard touchdown on the for the Heat, the uh, two-point conversion run failed. 9.24 to play in the first quarter. It was an 8-6 lead in favor of Wentz Central. BPC would come back with 6.32 to play in the uh, first, half, first quarter. Talon Love on a 38-yard catch, uh, pitch and catch to Osmond Perelka in the Weird thing about that one was that ball was tipped by a defensive back. Peroku turned back and caught the football and took it into the end zone. The run failed. It was 8-6 again at the end of the first quarter. It was BPC getting on the board with 10-30 to play in the half on a Lane Huppin 59-yard touchdown run. The run failed 12-8.
with 12.30 to play. And then two scores, boom, boom, right in the last two minutes of the opening half. West Central goes up 14 to 12 with a, another run from Steffs and this one from six yards out with a minute 59 to play. Two point conversion failed that time. And it was a 14-12 lead for the Heat, but BPC comes right back with 30.4 seconds to play. Town Love, his second touchdown of the half. 11-yard pass to Brock Beekman left to Proku on the two-point conversion pass. And that's where we're at halftime, doing 20-14 in favor of BPC. Yeah, interesting to see, see a lot of uh, Heat players getting stretched out by the trainer and coaches on the near side here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. We saw a few players go down with a little, you know, gimpy a little bit at the end of the yeah. half. You know, Gibb went down. Uh, Beekman went out, but he caught the touchdown pass afterwards. But when you sit down for 15 minutes, how do you come back out? You know, right. Gibb is one of them down here getting stretched out for the heat. So you wonder how that will affect this second half mm -hmm. and whether all, all the players who – maybe got a little bruise or a little ding or a little tweak of an ankle. Are they fine when they come back out, or is it worse when they come back out? Right. So we'll see how that goes. As and they did put more time on the clock, yeah. down to minute 35 now. Again, BPC will start with the football to start the second half. And it's a huge possession for both teams, this first one. It's not do or die for either one, but it's a huge possession for both of them because if BPC can get up two scores – with an offense that is scored every time they've touched the ball, I think, haven't they? All but one. No, BPC scored they, every time. They, yeah. they did score every time. So, you know, they're, they've scored every time they touched the ball. So if, if you can score here and keep that rolling, it really makes it difficult for the Heat so long as you can get an extra point or two points Conversion. And, and, don't, right. and don't let the Heat catch you by getting the two-point conversions. Right. And how big was it for – you know, BPC to score, but to keep West Central out of the end zone there at the end of the first half. Yeah, it was uh, it was very close to not being able to keep them out of the end zone, and uh, you know that's part of it, right? That's why yep. we that's why you play the game, as yep. they like to say, and that's why we're here tonight. But I'll tell you what, it it's it's got the makings of a very good football game as we go along here, and and again, Coach Raleigh is over there. Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance bringing you BPC Sports here on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. As we're working around. Uh, oh, you're fine. Just be careful. Temperature dropping back to 75 now at kickoff here in the second half. And again, it feels a lot cooler, cooler than, that than that because of the breeze. Yeah. I don't. I can't believe the real feel was 82 earlier because with uh, the breeze, it felt like we should be talking about wind chill instead right. of real feel. <laughs> of course, I'm getting old and well, I'm old too. A little wimpy, maybe that might be the problem. I'm getting older by the second. <laughs> So BPC going to go uh, north to south, left to right to start the second half. Thomas and Perelku back, and again, Stepson with the ball on the tee for the Heat, and we're ready for second half football here from West Central High School. See if they do the onside again here. They do. Going to be fielded by Xander Jones on the far side at the uh, Spartan 45. You know, you, you wonder why you do that. BPC is not, you haven't stopped BPC yet, right? So if you can get the ball back in some manner, you know, you, you take that opportunity to do that. Plus, they've been scoring on you anyway, so whether they start the 45 right. or the 25, I, they just take less time to do right, it. Right, and I kind of wonder with Peroka with that nice run back that he had that maybe thought was keep the ball away from him. And that could be it, too. Two receivers near side, love under center. Lone setback is Huffman. A fake the handoff to Beekman. Huffman's going to go up the middle and lost his footing, it looked like. I, I don't know if he lost the ball or, or the, the footing. footing, but he got grabbed by Stefan, I believe. 
and kind of just ripped him around backwards. I couldn't tell whether he lost the ball or not, but he kind of <clears throat> dove back like he was looking for the football. Gain of a couple on first down for Lane Huffman. Second and eight. All at the Spartan 48-yard line. The pass plays have forced the Heat to play much deeper in the secondary. Have you noticed that? Yes. And off Huffman near side. He's going to get the corner across the 40. Across, across the, the 50. 50. Going to come up a little short of the first down marker, it looks like. Not much. Third and about one. Yeah. Maybe third and two. I don't know. Third and one and a half-ish. <laughs> Call it for a third and 18 inches. <laughs> a foot and a yard and a half or whatever you want to call it. So BPC going to come out with the two receivers far side. Again, Love going to go under center. Up in the lone setback. Third and two. Going to take the hand off to Huffman, and he's got a lot of room, and he may go across the 20, 15, 10. Going to be knocked out of bounds or inside the 10 at about the 9. Well, that's exactly what we were talking about, right? Yep. Why do you take the chance to get the, the onside kick? Because Huffman can break one on you about any time like that. 42 yards for Huffman. That's going to put him over 100 yards on the night. Now 125 on nine carries. That's a smidge better than 20 on 100. Uh, yeah. 120 on 20, isn't it? Right. So 10.49 to go first and goal for BPC from the uh, Heat 9. Gonna send just Perelko to the near side. Beekman in a tight end. Huffman going to line up to the right of Dallin Love. Snap. Hand off. Love's going to go the other side, and he's going to tiptoe in. No, just short of the goal line. Hey, he hesitated to yep. try to stay in bounds and get to the goal line. Couldn't quite do it. That was a little bit of a counter. You don't see yep. that a whole lot in no. eight-man football. No. But had you know the strong side was to the right, and uh, Huffman took a step to the right and then came back to the left and tried to get the touchdown, but he's going to be a little bit short down to about the two-yard line. So gain of seven, second and goal for the Spartans at the Heat 2, 10-15 to play here in the third quarter. Spartans up by six. Love shotgun, Upman lined up to his left. Upman again, can he get the corner? He will touch down, nope, no, just out of bounds. Short again. See, that's one where, you know, Lane who never usually you know, shies away from contact. You just like to Lower see him shoulder. plant the foot, turn up field, and try to win the battle, right? Right. But you you had four downs to get there, so. Third down and goal from about the, well, they're saying he actually lost a yard, but now I think no, that's still at the two. Third down and goal from the one is what they're saying now. Okay, now they've changed the scoreboard. Third and one, 9.57, clock stopped when Hempman ran out of bounds. Oh, clock, the hand is moving. BPC's got to get this play off, and they, they don't. don't. Delay a game. That's huge. Seven penalties now on BPC for 35 yards. Man, you can't take that no, penalty and there was on some third goal to one. Coming to the line about, I think, alignment or whatever. Well, part of it is, is they were trying to take the snap under center, and how many times have we seen them do that tonight? Right. So Love gets the play in from the sidelines this time. So third down and goal now from the six. You see quickly out of the huddle of the line. So two down territory, obviously, Beekman probably. Beekman in motion. Going to fake the handoff to Beekman. Love's going to keep a nice, nice play fake by Talon Love into the end zone touchdown. BPC, and he did a great job on that one of hiding the football. And he's going to go in for the six and make it a 26-14 lead for BPC. And he's leaving the field, which tells me Perelku's trying to PAT here. Nope. Here comes Love. Oh, back he comes on. back. I thought maybe he was going to try one. 
And a score for Millersville. It's Millersville 16, Amboy 12 in the third quarter. Nine. Nine. He just read that store backwards from what you said. I'm like, one of you is not right, and then he well, changed it. Yeah. That'll send two receivers far side. And back there to again. Judge. Love's going to fake the handoff. He's going to get hit from the back side, and that's going to fall incomplete. So it's now a 26 to 14 lead, 12 point lead for BPC. 9.52 to play here in the third quarter. We'll get the scoreboard updated. Tell you that this game being brought to you by MB Furniture, Bushnell's only furniture store. MB Furniture is a mainstay in the community and offers full de free delivery within 40 miles. For everything you need to furnish your new home or replenish an old one, stop and see the fine folks at 41 West Main Street or find them on Facebook, Instagram, or on the web at www.mmbfurnitureinc.com. You can also call 309-772-2111. And Rosie's Pizza. Rosie's Pizza offers something for everyone with pasta, sandwiches, and, of course, pizza. Dine-in or carry-out at 458 East Main Street in Bushnell. They also deliver to Good Hope, Aid Air, and all points in between. For delivery, call 309-772-2101. And Farmers Merchant State Bank of Bushnell for over 100 years. Farmers and Merchant State Bank of Bushnell has been serving the local community's needs for personal and business banking as well as home and agricultural lending. Stop by the main branch at 484 East Main Street or the drive-up facility on Cole Street to learn more. Roku to kick it away. Wade and steps in back again for the heat. Onside kick, and BPC's going to get on it. Oh, they're going to say legal touch. I thought it was it went the 10, but. Legal touching? I don't know. Must be what it is. Waving no, it off. Now they're waving it off. Oh. Legal touching then, it's, so it will be West Central football at the Spartan 49. Well, I didn't see anybody near it. Simpson's going to go under center, 9.52 to play here, third quarter. Heat's first offensive possession of the second half, and that's going to be Stephson. And hanging on for dear life around the ankles, Mr. Willie. And he's going to gain six. Yeah, five or six. So second, and we'll call it second and four for the Heat. 9.26 to play here, third quarter. Spartans on top of the Heat, 26 to 14. I don't know why the scoreboard didn't update. I actually did update at that time. And a handoff going to go, and it's Stephson again, and he's cutting back, and he's still on his feet, still on his feet, and going to take it all the way down to the Spartan 25-yard line. <laughs> 18 yards for Stephson on that one. 144 now on 22 carries. Couple of touchdowns. The scoreboard is a great thing, but sometimes even when you push the buttons, it doesn't work. Right. And then, so it had been working. I just took for granted it was going to work, and I was wrong. 8.50 to play. First and 10 for the Heat from the Spartan 25. Handoff this time is going to Steps. And again, BPC doing a good job this time, wrapping up around the, the knees. Kramer and Pierce on the stop. Gain of two. Second and eight. Or West Central, the BPC 23. That's going to be Stephson. He's going to be knocked out of bounds at about the six. 
Huffman knocked him out of bounds. Willie tried to finish him off, but it would have been a touchdown if Willie's tackle would have stood. Hundred and sixty three yards now for Isaiah Stephson for the Heat. First and goal from the PPC five. Eight minutes to play, two, four to play. Stephson just right behind the line of scrimmage. Bulldozes into the end zone. Touchdown, West Central. Both these teams are going to be sore tomorrow. They are yes, just they are. pounding each other up the middle and then occasionally, you know, Huffman will bounce something outside, but for the most part, it's just beating on each other up the middle here. And you don't see a lot of that in eight-man football, but it's sure going on tonight. I'll line it up for two, 26-20, 7.58 to play. Sits and under center. Why not? Hand it off to Steps in again. I'll tell you what, the two-point conversions are going to be huge here. Mm -hmm. If neither team can stop the other one, BPC has got to figure out a way to get some two-point conversions as they've only got one on their four touchdowns so far. So 26-22 in favor of BPC. 7.58 to play here in the third quarter. We'll take a break. We'll be right back on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. I like to make time for my patients. I don't ever want anyone to feel rushed. I'm happy to sit and talk for as long as they need. And you know, sometimes that puts me behind in my schedule, but I think it's worth it. People know if they need me that I'll be there. Back here to West Central High School, 26-22 in favor of the Heat. Seven or favor BPC, 7.58 to play. Heat just moving quickly down the field on that last drive as Stepson's got it kicked. They're gonna, and that's not gonna go 10 yards. BPC smart to come up, not come up and touch it and let uh, the Heat touch it. So BPC's gonna be set up in good field position here. At the Heat 47 yard line. Dame Fine Coffee is here. I want to thank Dame Fine Coffee for sponsoring a state championship game with TSSR Game Time Live last year. We're going to be pre presenting a check after the game to the West Central Athletic Association uh, for $600 for their help awesome. in selling sponsorship during the game so we'll do that after the game so we want to thank them for their help last year and we'll see who's in it this year to see if we can do the same thing empty uh, backfield with love uh, Huffman going to be in motion Love going to all sorts of pressure get rid of the football it's going to be con Huffman takes a no, huge hit it. Huffman down he got hit by oh, Stephson Yeah, that was a big hit, one that he probably really didn't need to take. Just the second incomplete pass for Love. Well, the, the fake to uh, Huffman as he was coming in, the, the outside linebacker didn't follow him nope. and ran in uncovered right in Love's face. So second and 10 BPC from the Heat 47. Single setback behind Love is Huffman. Huffman's going to get the football. They fumble. Looks like Huffman was able to fall back on it or. It's not Huffman. Nope, 71. Fumble 70, Huffman. William Anderson on the football for BPC. And Huffman's got a cramp. He's and trying Huffman, to stretch I out. I don't. I was kind of surprised they he, tried to hand the ball right off. Right after that right hit. It's a third down and long, third and 11. Guppy's going to have to come in for him.
That completely changes this game if something happens that Huffman's yeah. not able to continue. Love's going to take the snap, and we're going to get a false start. I think Love was stepping backwards before he took the snap, before the ball was snapped, I should say. Yep. False start. BPC going the wrong way here, back to their own 47. Third and about 16. You know, this is the first time that did – did Huffman play any defense last week? Uh, some, but not much. I was going to say, this is the first time I've seen him play defense, so he's getting a few more plays than he's used to. Love shotgun snap. Going to roll right side. Looks, got a man open. No, underthrown. Beekman thrown into that wind out of the southeast. It's going to come up well short. And we might get our first punt of the contest here with 6.52 to play here in the third or in the third quarter, fourth and 16 for the Spartans as we see Huffman back in for BPC. And just as we said, it's back to Deuce now and really advantage goes back to the Heat. Yep. Down by only four and BPC has shown little resistance to stopping them as well. Steps in back, love to punt it away. Flag, line drive, kick going to be fielded at about the 27 on the run. Stepson's got some room. going to be wrapped out of bounds by Love, but we do have a penalty flag. Well, if that's on, if it's on the heat, I almost think you repunt that. Doesn't look like it's going to be, though. It is. Well. But motions from the officials. I'm not yeah. sure. because He said, can you have it there? Do you want him to re-kick? And Coach Kirby's like, I'll take it right there, I would imagine. Halt star. Declined. Yeah, that's the, the opposite yep. of what I said. If right. it was against the heat, you probably repunt that just to try to get him pinned right. a little deeper. Yeah. So West Central going to take it over first to 10 from their own 46. See Huffman back in on defense, in def for defense for the BPC Spartans. 6.41 to play. Simpson under center for the Heat. Kramer timed it apparently that time. I thought he was offsides, but hand off to Stephson and not much there, maybe a half yard at best. I'm going to guess you don't see the Heat throw the football here unless they absolutely have to. No. They have had all kinds of success with Stephson just pounding the ball up the middle against this Spartan defense. And uh, I don't see that changing anytime soon. It's Cole and company having some success there on the offensive line. There it is again. And again, they just move the pile. Gain of about five. Folks, you got to look at the offensive linemen for the Heat. They were 10 yards downfield in about two seconds, yep. pushing whoever they were supposed to be blocking. Stephson is not getting contact until he's past the line of scrimmage. Well past it most and, times. Uh, that is uh, spells disaster for a defense if you can do that time after time. There's Kirby going up saying, hey, he was offsides. And Stephson on the carry. He's going to have enough for West Central first down. Twenty-eight carries, 182 yards for Stephson. He's having a pretty good ball game, and it's he's he's going to be sore tomorrow. He's taking a lot of hits, but he's working his tail off, and he's getting yards, and he's getting first downs for the Heat. First and 10 from the Spartan, 41. Still over six yards of carry, too. I hand off right up the middle to Stephson again. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds at the 30. That's going to be about an 11-yard gain and another first down for the Heat. You know, they're using the second fake to <coughs> Gibb, mm -hmm. but they're using that as a hesitation, and then Gibb gets in front and becomes a lead blocker, Blocker's, and Stephson yep. is jumping yep. out. Yep. He's getting through the line of scrimmage and bouncing out and following Gibb, and 
It's just working time after time after time. And the thing is, is when and if BPC cheats it, the next time they're going to do something else right. and catch the whole defense off down, offside or you know out of position for a touchdown. First and ten from the BPC thirty-one for West Central. This is going to be a handoff to number twenty-four that was, Anderson. That was the counter that yep. we talked about earlier, He's where be. he bounced it against the grain and gets the near a first down. Be gain of seven. 429 and counting, 26 22 in favor of BPC. They are still in the third quarter. Up right up the middle step. And he's going to go into the end zone touchdown, West Central. That's the thing, you keep pounding it yep. at the same people enough times, you're gonna break it. Yep. And that finally did happen for the Heat. And the Heat have taken, taken the, the lead. lead. Fourth touchdown for Stephson. This one from 24 yards out. He's at 227 yards of rushing now. And I'm gonna guess you're gonna see more of the same thing right here. Yep. Steps in, in for the two-point conversion. Twenty-eight, twenty-two, four, ten to play here in the third quarter, and lead for the West Central Heat. Thirty to twenty-two. Right? Thirty to twenty-two, or twenty-six, I should say. Yeah, know what I mean. Not what I say. <laughs> so a four-point lead now for West Central. And again, we've talked about it. West Central has scored the same number of touchdowns as BPC. The two point the but they've got two, two more two-point conversions. Yep. And, you know, you get one more advantage and you're up a whole touchdown. Yeah. You yep. know, that's the whole yep. thing is that the two-point conversions are a huge deal here. Yes. So Stepson will tee it up for West Central. And we got a different number. It looks like maybe kicking this one away. Thomas and Perelku back for BPC at their own 15. Stimson holding the ball. They've, they've done that every time. Somebody else has put the ball down and then somebody else kicks it. That's what screwed me up the first kick in the game. Sides on West Central. Mark Filger, number six on the kick that time for West Central. That was a pretty good kick, too. If you were watching the Macomb game a few weeks back, you saw this same problem as they put Ian Case in to kick after I can't remember who had been kicking earlier, and uh, they had three straight offside penalties. Wow. So move it back to the 35 now. Thomas Perucco going to scoot up to about the 28. Nice deep end over end kick. That may go all the way in. Going to go out of bounds just short of the goal line. Hey, we got a kicker too. I was going to say, a little deception there maybe by West <laughs> Central, you think? We got a kicker too, kids. So now you talked earlier about BPC being down 6 nothing or 8 nothing. How would they react? Now they're down in the second half for the first time in the whole season except against West Prairie. Yes. So we'll see how they handle this little bit of uh, resistance from the Heat here as the Heat have taken a four-point lead, 30-26, to 26, as we still have four minutes and ten seconds in the third quarter. This quarter seems to be lasting quite some time here. So BPC going to come out. 
Shotgun for Love. Lane Huffman to his left. Broku, the lone receiver on the far side. I hand it off to Huffman. Huffman's going to go right far side. And he's going to be brought down about the line of scrimmage. Nice tackle over there by the kicker. Number six, Mark Vilger. Gain of, we'll call it no gain, maybe a, I'll give him a yard on the play. Second to nine, 350 to play here, third quarter. And shotgun formation, love. High snap, gonna inside pitch to Beekman, and that's gonna go nowhere, as that was read beautifully by West Central. Number 21. Hunter Schrader, so third and long for BPC. Third and about 17, 315 to go, and now you really swing, feel the momentum swinging now towards the in favor of the West Central Heat. I think it's already swung, Chris. And it's swinging even more now. Yeah, I think it's there. It's just <laughs> it's just getting beat them a little more to that side. It's all heat here in the second half of this third quarter. You feel like if BPC can't get a score and keep with them, they're going to be in trouble yeah. because they have not been able to stop the heat unless the heat stopped themselves. Fake the hand off to Huffman, and the pass is going to be caught by Kramer as Love is slipping down. He gets it back to about the original line of scrimmage. Penalty flag and on the play, I think and Kramer Kramer's hurt hurts. now. Maybe a cramp. We'll hope it's a cramp. Love falling down, able to get the ball off. And well, Kramer is a lineman. I don't right. know. I, th I think I don't know if an eight man, to be honest with you, if everybody is an eligible receiver or not. I was thinking they were, but I could be wrong. I thought they were, but we'll. Nope, apparently not. Lost it down. The officials are just now realizing there's an injured player over there. Kramer's going to get up and walk off. We'll hope it's just a cramp. He was kind of bouncing around like maybe it was just a cramp. So he talks to the trainer on the far side. But fourth and a bunch here for BPC. And kicking into the wind. A 240 to play, 30 to 26 in favor of West Central. Yeah, huge defensive stop there for the Heat. They're gonna have a steps him back at midfield to field the kick. High snap. I'm just gonna have to try and run with it. Still on his feet, still on his feet, still on his feet. He made. He's got the first down and more. He's got Huffman as a blocker. Going to be run out of bounds on the far side by number 81, Cody Wade. And disaster turns into a smell, coming out smelling like a rose for BPC. Town loves dying over there too. He's, but he did a good job. And that's part of the, th the problem, right? When that happens for a defense or an offense as they're coming to get the ball, they turn and they, you know, they're blocking. They're not looking to try, right. try to tackle somebody. And by the time they realize that they need to go back to defense, you know, you're you're chasing somebody rather than trying to get to and tackle somebody. That almost, I mean, he picked that snap up at about the ten, and it's first and ten BPC from the Heat, 32 yard line, 2:24 to play. Shotgun formation, going to fake the handoff, delayed handoff to Huffman. Huffman's going to cut it back, and he'll get it inside the 25. Gain of about seven on the play. How many yards did, did Talon Love get on that carry? 
Well, from the 10 all the way, we'll call well, it the it 10. Well, it wasn't. No, he, was, he wasn't that far. It was like the 19, 19? where the snap went, took, from, took off from, I think. I'm just saying from where he actually got the football, though. <laughs> but yeah. it was a long way and beat BC. To the 32, right? Yep. So, so it's a gain of two there. So, so 50 yards. Yep. We'll say 51, 52 yards on the carry. Gain of two for Huffman. A minute 47 to play third quarter. Heat up 30 to 26. Shotgun formation. Lone set back as Huffman to Love's left. And a flag from the far side. We get a delay game. No, it They're shouldn't lined be. Lined off offside. Lined up offsides, one of the teams. Offsides yep. on West Central. Offsides West Central. That's a big penalty. There's been a lot of that here. Sec in this game, yeah, a second from second and eight to second and three from the 25. 130 to play. I was going to take the snaps, looking to throw. He's got a man open just out of the reach of Perelku. He laid out for it, couldn't quite get to it. Stop the clock with a minute 22 to play here in the third quarter. <laughs> Third and three for BPC from the Heat 25, trailing by four. Gonna <laughs> come two receivers near side, under center, love, single setback is Leighton Huffman. Huffman's gonna take it, come to the near side, Side's going to be knocked out of bounds. And he's going to have enough for a first down for BBC. Take it from the 25 to about the 18, it looks like. Called a gain of seven. 19, we'll see where they mark it here. Looks like the 19. They're saying ball on the 20, so it's just barely past the 20. Actually, it is on the 20. It's outside right. the 20. So a gain of five. First and 10 for BPC. Beekman in motion. Fake the handoff to him. Huffman going to go up the middle. Gain of a couple on the play. Lane Huffman on the carry. Tackled by 54 Blake Cole. Huffman is sore. He has lost a step here, Chris. Yeah. Blake Cole on the stop as we're under a minute to play. 56 seconds to go. Second and nine, BPC from the Heat, 19. Beekman again in motion. Gonna roll out, Huffman, or low Love will, and the pass thrown behind Perelku. Clock stop with 35.7 seconds to play. Third quarter. It's been a long third quarter. It has. <laughs> we spoke too soon about how quick the opening half was as we're almost to 9 o'clock here on this Friday night. Third and nine. BPC going to send Beekman and Perupku near side, under center, love, sole setback. Lane Huffman going to hand it off to Huffman. And he's going to be brought down to the backfield for a loss of a couple on the play. Number 24. Xander, Xander Anderson. Anderson. We got an injured player. That's Huffman. A cramp, I'm guessing. The way he is bouncing around, I'm going to guess it's a cramp. And the way he's walking off tells you it's a cramp. Yep. He's been battling that here for about the last... Well, since he got knocked down yeah, on that, that pass attempt. Hit, yeah. So big fourth down here for BPC. Fourth and 12. Let's see Parker Guppy going to check in the ball game for BPC. 21.4 seconds. Play. Can BPC find some fourth down magic again? Well, I don't know. <laughs> the last one was about as big of a fourth down magic as you could hope for, I think. You have to run a play here and make it work is what I'm thinking. But Roll the clock now to 19 seconds to play. 
I don't know that they're going to run another play. If they don't have to, they're not going to. They're going to wait and see. Yeah, I guess they, sh they don't have to. And, you know, the, the thing about this, there's two things I see about this, why I don't think this is a bad idea. You're going to run a fourth down play where you're probably going to want to pass the ball. With the wind at your back. You're going to have the wind at your back now instead of at your at your face. And the other thing is, is you're going to keep one more play away from the heat. Right. So we go to the fourth quarter here from West Central High School in Biggsville, Illinois. The Heat lead the Spartans 30 to 26. Spartans have fourth and 15 from about the 20 yard line for of the Heat coming up after the break. We'll take a quick one. We'll be back here as Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance brings BBC Sports, the TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Working at MDH feels special to me because I'm also from a small community like MDH and I love to be able to care for communities like this and be able to give them high standards of excellence with medical care as possible. You know, some people like to take more of a medical approach to their care. Some people like to take more of a holistic. And I just want to be able to make their plan of care as individualized as possible. Back here at West Central High School as we get ready for the fourth quarter in an exciting ball game. West Central 30, BPC 26. Fourth and 15 for BPC at the Heat 25-yard line and all sorts of confusion again. I've never seen a team have so many problems coming out of a huddle. Proko and Beekman. Beekman going to take the handoff. He's going to look to throw. He's got a man. Nope, he's going to be tipped away incomplete. Had Pierce, I believe, or Peroku on the far side. So it'll be West Central football, 30 to 26. They're up by four as we're just underway here in the fourth quarter. Justine Blower, 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 I believe it's Blower, says go Heat. So you get to the fourth quarter and some of the Heat fans that are watching are talking up a little bit. I can't blame them. He to playing a very good football game here at one and four, and I think a lot of people wrote them off in this contest. Yep. But uh, we said before that a Coach Kirby team that spent the year last year as the number one ranked team and won the state championship, even if a lot of those kids are gone, these kids still believe that yep. they can play. So they're going to come out first and ten from their own 25. And it's going to be Stepson, I believe, and he's going to – Pick up about five or so in the play. You're going to get a healthy del dose of Steffs in here. And uh, the 232 yards on 31 carries. The Heat are going to take as much time off the clock as they absolutely can. And you can't blame them for that. Second down and four. And Nate Kramer's not in there, is he? Oh, he is in yeah, there. Yeah, he is in there. Lane Hoffman still on the far side trying to stretch out the, that steps. And again, a big push by the offensive line gets a first down for the Heat. There comes Cole into the play. The senior was all the way out to the 50 yard line right. blocking there. I mean, I'm going to try this time rather than watching the ball carrier. I'm just going to watch those three linemen who just push the BPC defensive line straight back. There's a Western Illinois University football shirt right down here in front of us. Sips is going to hand out. This is going to be Webb. And he's going to have a nice gain of about eight. You see who's two of them standing right beside yeah. him there? Yep. Two of the offensive linemen. <laughs> I mean, it's just utter domination up front right now for the Heat. And, uh, you know, I think if Jason was here and Jason, my brother, was talking, he would be saying that defensive line needs to make a pile. Yep. Don't get pushed back. Just fall down, make a pile. Let your linebackers have a clear shot at yep. somebody. And they haven't done that as of yet. So second and... Two and beat West Central no real hurry here. They're going to run, run as much time as they can off the clock. Stephson still on his feet, still on his feet. 
going to be across midfield down to the 45. And penalty flag coming in late. That's going to be a late hit on somebody. I want to guess BPC kept pushing him out of the play. We'll Carter see. Chambers, I think somebody over there is slow getting up. It was Chambers. Yep, personal foul on BPC. Yeah, Stephen, Stephson came all the way from the track after that play, so that tells me that somebody either kept pushing or threw him well after he was out of bounds probably. And a huge penalty for BPC in the momentum that BPC maybe could have gotten back after that miracle fourth down run on a missed punt snap is uh, quickly fading. 33 carries now for Stephson. Remember the first week when Coach uh, Chisler said he wanted to get 25 carries for Huffman. Right. Webb on the carry this time. He's going to gain about another five or six. Nine fifty to play. Thirty to twenty-six lead for the Heat. Second and six. Ball at the BPC twenty-six yard line. And West Central, no hurry, coming to the line of scrimmage. Hey, hon, can you dip, can you dip down for me a little bit? Carry on the, I think that is Stephson again. And he's going to have enough, it looks like, for a first down. Well, he was almost on the ground, had a hand down, and just carried a player. Going to call third down, but he's going to be within a yard or two yep. here. Clock down to nine minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. And every since about the, what, six or seven minute mark, eight minute mark of that third quarter, it's been all yep. West Central. Yep, momentum, huge swings. So third down at about two. Simpson under center, gonna be a quarterback keeper and look the offensive line push and he's gonna have enough plenty for a first down it looks like. Not quite the Philadelphia Eagles no. tush push, but. Down to 8.20 to play first and 10 for the Heat from the BPC 15. And they'll probably wait. There's the arm starting to move again. Up in the middle, Stepson. Got down by Ethan Pierce, 42. You know, the other thing for BPC is there's only one game all year that the starters have played four yep. quarters. And I wonder if that isn't having something to do with this right now as West Central is really just pushing yeah, they're, BPC around. Yeah, they're really just holding their, you know, taking what they want, doing what they want, going where they want at this Huffman point. back in for BPC. Second and four. Ball at the Spartan 13. Imposing their will is what I was trying to say earlier. Kramer coming in on the blitz doesn't make the stop. It was Chambers. It looks like Stepson again. Yeah. Carter Chambers and Tanner Pierce in the stop. And gain of about three. 266 now on 36 carries. 705 remaining here in the football game. Thirty to twenty-six in favor of West Central. Be the quarterback keeper again. And look at that push. He's almost down to the goal line. And they are just eating up clock. Down to 645 to play. And it becomes a two-possession game on a touchdown here. Carter Chambers checking out of the ball game for BPC.
first and goal from the two. Six under 6.30 to play now. Quarterback keeper. Number 70 sure. on the stop for BPC, Stimson. Stimson kept it, but not much there that time. Second and goal from about the one, inside the one it looks like. But, Six minutes to play. But from the Heat's point of view, as long as they get it in, they don't care if it yeah. takes two plays, three right. plays, or four plays. Right. The more time you have it, the more plays you run, the more time you take off the clock, the less time BPC has it with the football. Handoff steps in into the end zone. Touchdown, West Central from a yard out. This makes it a 10 point lead for West Central. Simpson under center, single back. We got movement. I think BPC maybe jump. Nope. Oh, yep. Off sides on the Spartans. Hard count by BPC. Or by West Central there. West Central, and they All jumped. Right, so, a chance to make it a two touchdown lead here if they can get this two point conversion. Stepson, no signal yet. He reached yet. it across. Nope. We're saying no. Huh. Yeah, he's like, I was right there. I reached it across. I I think that he probably I think did. He, I thought he did as well, but. He definitely yeah. reached it out, and but they said it wasn't across. That kind of surprises me a little. I thought, sure, they'd give it to him. They did not. With 5.46 to go here in the football game. The Heat lead by 10. 36-26. Game being brought to you tonight by Raritan State Bank. Raritan State Bank's Bushnell Branch, located 360 South Green Street in Bushnell. Offers full-service banking and loan services for all your banking needs. Come visit the bank of friendly service or call them at 309-772-2345. Good luck, Spartans. Bushnell Banking Center is an equal housing lender. A member of FDIC. See if these cheerleaders do all 36 here. They, uh, BPC last week or a couple weeks ago when they were up 60, they started they going by fives. By fives. Right. <laughs> Give them credit. They didn't back they out. Did they did not. the whole thing. Perelku and uh, Thomas back for BPC. Velger, Mark Velger into a kick again for the Heat. See what it does into the wind this time. Still a nice kick. Fielded by Perelku at about the 23. He's got some room and he's got some speed. He's going to be horse collared down. And a penalty marker comes in. He's going to get it almost out to the 50-yard line. He said earlier, that's one good thing you see out of Proku when he returns kick. He, you see a lot of hesitation at a lot some of the returners at this level. Proku catches it and he hits high gear pretty quick. Personal foul face mask. So here's the deal with that. You, you say, well, you're up by 10 points. There's five minutes left. That's not necessarily a huge deal breaker because you've been able to move the football down the field. Neither team has a turnover yet, though, right? No. One turnover. BPC scores quick and a turnover, and BPC's got the ball right back. You know, you, you're, you're not in a position here to give up anything. You know, you don't. 
you're the Heat, you want to keep your foot on the proverbial throw to the Spartans. Pop's going to look to throw. He's got a man oh, in between Perelku and Lane Huffman. That'll stop it with 531 to play. Spartans trail it by 10. Second intent for BPC from the uh, Heat 35. Three receivers to the near side. Oh snap, Love's gonna take off with it. Breaks one tackle, still looks. He's got a man open, overshot. Beekman, good job of recognition there by Love not to go across the line of scrimmage before throwing that football. Third down and 10 for BPC. That's gonna stop it with 5.24 to play. I would have liked to have seen BPC try to run the football a little bit unless unless they're telling us that, you know, that Huffman is a step slow right now or maybe hurting a little bit. We'll send him down the field, but not going to want him to try to carry the football. Got some confusion again coming out of the huddles. Prelku and Beekman come near side. Huffman going to go single receiver far side. I'm going to take the low snap. I'm going to look to throw. He's got all sorts of heat. He's going to get it off. Nope. We're going to be knocked down. Pass intended for Beekman. That was deflected and knocked away by Cody Wade. Love 0 of 7 passing here in the second half for BPC. So fourth and 10 for the Spartans. Down. 10, 36, 26 to the Heat, 5, 18 to play here in the fourth quarter. Well, the Spartans are taking a long time and there's the, there's the hand going up. Timeout BPC. You gotta get the play in and out faster than that. And now you're down 10. You need a score and you have to spend a timeout. Time yeah, which you didn't need to spend. So BPC takes their first of the half. Game being brought to you tonight. I'll see if I can find our live reads again. I deleted them off of there. I'm sorry, folks. Give me just a second here. Final Amboy 32-20. 32-20, Amboy beats Milledgeville. Farmington on top of Macomb, 20-8. This game being brought to you by Sports Corner at 124. Macomb's original local sports bar, Sports Corner at 124. And here's the play. This might really be the football game here, folks. BPC, without a turnover after this, BPC's got to get a first down here. Fake Fakes the handoff. Hand Huffman. Love going to step up in the pocket. He's going to run. He's got plenty of room. First down and more. Will he go to the house? He will. Talon Love, touchdown from 35 yards out for BPC. Score coming with 5.08 to play. And BPC is down just four, 36-32. Well, we knew it was important. Talon Love has shown the ability to scramble maybe when he's not expected to, and he did it right there, and it worked for BPC as they have now taken, cut the lead to four and with a chance to make it two here if they can get the two-point conversion. 35 yards on the touchdown run for Talon Love. Big two-point conversion here for BPC. Looks to throw, Love's gonna step up and he's gonna walk into the end zone to get the two-point conversion is good. And we've got a two-point ball game, 5.08 to play, 36 to 34 in favor of West Central over BPC. We'll take a break and we'll be back on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. You're watching 
Devin Raleigh, Shelter Insurance coverage of BPC Sports. My experience with McDonough District Hospital was amazing. I have a lot of allergies complicated by nasal problems. And the procedure I had is Vive Air. Dr. Sparks was incredible. The Vive Air procedure is a radiofrequency ablation procedure. She no longer has to do any medications to breathe, so she gets much more restful night's sleep. And a short little office procedure and have somebody that feels like it's totally changed their life means the world. It's a permanent improvement on the quality of your life. Back here at West Central High School, 5.08 to play. We've got a dandy of a ball game, 36-34 in favor of West Central. A couple of fourth down magic plays for BPC thus far. And a big one there for Talon Love on a 35-yard touchdown run to cut it. And then Love with the two-point conversion run cuts it to a two-point lead for West Central, 36-34. Yeah, BPC is hanging by the skin of their teeth, so to speak, and they've had some big plays, some big fourth down things that have went their way. But, you know, it's it's not about how you get there. It's about getting there, and it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to make that happen here as we work the rest of the way through West this. West Central expecting maybe an onside kick. They, it is, and it is still loose. West Central, I think, finally did fall on the football. That bounded through a couple of West Central players. And a lineman came up with it. No, it was Stephson. Now He's BPC's, doing everything, isn't he? Yeah, BPC now has got to find a way to come up with a defensive stop here. Troy Jern, how you doing, buddy? Where are you watching from tonight? Why aren't you here at the game? That's a better question. Troy, a Heat fan. Worked with him at the Henderson County Sheriff's Department back in the day. 5.06 to play, 36-34 in favor of West Central. Heat will have it first in 10 from their own 44-yard line. Oh, looks like somebody moved. Uh, that's going to be Stephson again wrapped up by Kramer. Gain of six. Yeah. 38 carries for 273 now for Stephson. That's a, that's a, that's a yeoman's day of, work, yeah, isn't yes it? Yes, it is. 440 to play. Heat up by two. And they're going to be no hurry to take the snap here. Now the signal from the bat judge. Simpson, the quarterback, and he's going to, again, that offensive line push is going to have enough for a first down. Five-yard gate for Stimson, and it's 4 418 to go. It's first and 10 at the Spartan 40. 45, excuse me, actually 44. They gave him more than I thought they were going to give him. 418 to play, clock counting down, 36-34 in favor of West Central. I'd like to remind everybody there will be a firework presentation after the game, so please stay in the seat. Down to four minutes to play. Now the back judge signals. Looks like maybe a false start. That's going to be Stepson again. And he's not even looking to break a run. He's just covering the ball yep. with both hands, lowering his head, taking what he can get, and a three. moving on down. And it's uh, actually that's a gain of four. Beekman on the stop. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe three. 3.33 to play. 36 34 in favor of West Central. This is a championship-style drive right here mm -hmm. if you're the Heat. If you can hold on to the football, take the rest of the time off the clock, score a touchdown. Steps in again, wrapped up. Looks like the number 60, Braxton Kemp. Well, that's the pile that we talked about right. BPC needing to make. Right. That's the first time they've really done it, and it held Stephson for about his shortest gain of the night. Down under three to play, 255 and counting. Remember, BPC took a timeout or right. two now, so they don't have. All right, we've got, BPC's got two left. Timeouts are not right on the scoreboard, folks. 
Down to 238. That will signal from the back judge. He's going to do it. Now they're going to take, take the timeout. Time so West Central taking their first timeout of the half. Both with teams now with two remaining. Coach Unruh, I believe, in the bucket hat there. It is. Both teams with two timeouts, I do believe. Yes. 2.29 to play. 36-34 in favor of West Central. The offensive line for the Heat tonight impressive, just been phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. 229 remaining here at West Central High School. It's homecoming for the Heat, and they are trying to take their seniors out with a big win, and they're doing a pretty darn good job of it right now. They're only up by two, but they, are, they have taken already four minutes off the clock or three minutes off the clock here on this drive, and they face a third down and about five. And they're gonna be able to milk this clock probably out now. Stephson gets it down to the BPC 25. You don't have enough boxes on the line for uh, Stetson for even twice. Are you uh, up to the third line yet? I'm almost three carries short of the uh, third line for Stetson. <laughs> <laughs> Clock running slowly here. BPC has got 41 a, carries now. BPC's got to look at the timeout or the possibility of the timeout here at some point. Two oh well, right at two minutes to play now. 36-34 in favor of West Central. Stetson under center. And it's going to be Willie went diving over the pile. Stepson, timeout BPC. There's second. Again, I know we mentioned this, don't want to beat a dead horse, but you have to wonder if how much of the domination for West Central in this late second half especially has been because of the fact that BPC yep. hasn't really had to play any four-quarter games until this point right. outside of West Prairie. So with 1.46 to go, it's 36-34. Heat with the lead. They have a second down and 10 from just about the BPC 25-yard line. And you see BPC on the camera there in their huddle. Coach Schistler and crew over there trying to keep them and get them fired up, but it's a pretty tall task at this point. They have got to find a way to try to stop Steffens and the rest of the Heat running offense at this point. 146 to go. Second and 10 for West Central. Hand off to Stepson again, and he's just going to oh, go Oh, look at down. that. He's going to drop down, get the first down, and drop down. That's a senior doing things right there, guys. Let me tell you yep. what. Stop the clock momentarily. 141 to play. You won't see very many high school kids do that. That's a pro move, not yep. a high school nope. move. And pretty much the ability just to run the clock out. BPC with only one timeout remaining. Final Farmington 26, Macomb 8. And, and again, he spins in, goes down again. Timeout BPC, they take a timeout. 
I don't know that. I don't know what they stopped the clock, but I'm not sure what for. Yeah, BPC did take their final time out. It sounds like or looks like. Well, if my count is right. That's 44 carries for Stephson and 309 yards. He's a man. He's definitely the dude tonight. He's a man tonight. That is for sure. This is a homecoming kind of performance that Al Bundy would be proud of. Yes. For all those married with children, married fans. With children fans at home. Did you see the meme running around when uh, Nick Chubb went out that the Cleveland Browns had Hi, uh, yeah. uh, went and got went Al and Bundy? Picked up Al Bundy to play halfback. Yeah. I almost wish we could get Stephson up here to talk to him because he's had a game, man. 54 seconds remaining, 36 34 in favor of. They got one more than BPC at this yep. point, right? Stimson under center. I think they'll just down it at yep. this point. No, nope. Stimson's going to. He is going to down it, but not until he gets to the goal line. Just short of the end zone. I really think BPC was trying to let him score. Yeah. I, I really think BPC, the last three right. plays, has been trying right. to let him score. Right. And clock starts again with 50 seconds to play. Should only have to take one snap for West Central. <clears throat> and Stimson is going to take a knee with 30 seconds to play. That'll be the last play. And that should do it. That is going to do it, 36-34 in favor of West Central. <clears throat> so West Central is going to move to two and four, and BPC is going to drop to four and two. Get Coach Kirby to come up here and talk to us. Coach Schistler is going to come talk to us. Be nice if we get a word with Stephson as well. Thirty-six, thirty-four. Again, the final score: West Central on top by two. Heat go to two and four. BPC is going to drop to four and two. As the Spartans and the Heat shake hands on the way across the field here. And that's uh, an absolutely amazing performance by Stephson tonight. Would you say 44 carries? I had him for 44 and 309 yards unofficially. Heck of a performance. So BPC falls, as Chris said, to four and two on the season. The Heat improved to two and four. And it has been that kind of a game here tonight as the Heat 
do about everything right, Chris. It's just it was just one of those games yep. where things went their way, and and, and I shouldn't say that because BPC had things go their way and chances, but penalties were a huge part, and <clears throat> especially the first half, and then the second half, the Heat didn't have the number of penalties right. that BPC did at the bad times either. Right, and you know, BPC. <laughs> A couple of big fourth down plays here to even, you know, to get on the scoreboard here in the fourth quarter. But uh, yeah, we talked about, like I said, the two-point conversions early on. Kind of had that feel for it in the first half. And what Central getting a couple more than BPC, one more than BPC, and they win it by two, 36-34. Yep, they Scored the same number of touchdowns, folks. It's all about the extra points, two points conversions, and it was enough tonight to get the win for the Heat here on homecoming. And and you know you we can't uh, overstate this enough. You know, homecoming is a huge game for everybody. You know, there's tons of people here. They had the first ever group homecoming for everybody, and they brought all these classes together right. and made this huge reunion deal. And and the team the team did such a great job of of feeding off that really and then they used a, a really herculean performance from stefson to did get I hear the win. fireworks yeah they're doing fireworks in just a few minutes here. so we're going to do this in the dark uh, apparently so <laughs> hey i've done worse things in the dark. i i, I know this will be interesting yeah, we Let's can do the interviews in the, under, under the brightness of fireworks. fireworks. Coach Sisler on I've, his way up. First time I've ever seen that, done that before, but we can do her. I'm more worried about the teardown of stuff after. Uh, they'll, turn, they'll, the they'll, they'll turn the lights back on when the fireworks are over. So 36-34, Coach Sisler on his way up. Give him the microphone here. And he'll turn that <clears> up a little bit yeah, more than, than it was a little soft there. I was trying to test it up. All right, well, Coach, go ahead, Dwayne. Coach, I tell you what, you you can't overlook a state championship football team. These aren't the same kids, a lot of them, but they played like they had that heart and that desire. Didn't yeah, they? they are a very well coached football team for sure. Um, you know, that's the biggest thing I tell these guys every single week. I don't care who we're playing. I don't care how big, how small, what their record is. We cannot overlook any team that we play, and that I, I think that's exactly what we did tonight. Um, you know, these guys came out and they were physical. They played hard, um, and it definitely showed. You know, we we tried to fight back. You know, it got it got away from us there, and it's just kind of hard to claw back after that. Yeah, just uh, you know, hard to get their offensive line. I mean, you know, we were talking about how much of a push their offensive line was oh, yeah. getting on the entire contest. Yeah, it, you know, eight, ten, twelve yards downfield. Yeah. So you look at a kid like Stephson. We have him for 44 carries tonight. That's crazy. Have you ever played against anybody that had 44 carries in a game? I've done I've done games for 20 years. I've never seen a kid carry the ball 44 times. Uh, no, but I mean, hey, if it's working, I mean, keep, we got to stop yeah, it. So you right. got, I mean, if they're going to keep running, we got to find a way to stop it. And we didn't find a way to stop it. So, you know, it's uh, it's disciplined football. We did not play disciplined football tonight. Um, it was just, it was a little sloppy, honestly, and. Uh, you know, we got. We know we need to prove on for next week. Yeah, and we, we were talking about that right, with Coach Borders in the first half. The the penalties we saw a lot of penalties tonight. That has been very un BPC like thus far. Yeah. I, I I thought off the bus the first drives. You guys looked like you didn't take them seriously. Then I felt like in the first half, your kids kind of responded, yeah. took control of the game a little bit. And then I wondered late, you had some cramps and you had some other stuff. If yeah. if maybe the fact that you haven't, you've only had one close game all year, yeah. that playing a full four quarters might have gotten to your kids yep. a little bit. Uh, and that's the guy who I said, I'm like, you know, guys, you we're, we're playing teams where, I mean, we were used to being up in the second quarter to running clog and stuff like that. I'm like, guys, we're going to get one of those games to where it's going to be a battle back and forth, and that's football. You know, that's what football should be. It's, you know, who's going to be the better defense, who's going to play more physical. And, they, like I said, they definitely played more physical tonight. Yeah, it, you guys just didn't have an answer for the offensive line. You know, one time late I saw Anderson make a pile a little bit, and I kind yep. of was waiting for you guys to do that, kind of make a pile or try to make a pile yeah. at least. So, it. yep, um, we were actually saying, like, guys, you got to shoot your gaps, shoot your gaps. We finally actually put in a, a freshman. And we're like, can you just go shoot a gap? And we put him in, and he was doing it every single time. So, I mean, it's it's nice when they actually listen instead of just standing straight up. I'm like, guys, we <laughs> right. cannot stand straight up because they're going to get four yards of carry every single time. So Yeah, I think that 
for most of the game, Stefson was averaging over six. That's crazy. So That's he crazy. was he was at 28 carries for a, 189 yards at one point, which is over six yards a carry. That's, so, yeah. I mean, you know, props to him. Like I said, if we couldn't stop it, so there's no reason to go away from it. Yeah, I, I can't say that I blame him. And coach, yeah, yeah and, and now, you know, four and two, you've got your senior night with a Flanagan ball club that's in about the same boat that you guys are, and you guys got a quick rebound, and you know, we talked – your toughest part of your schedule is still to come. Yeah, exactly. With Flanagan yep. next week, your trips to Ridgewood and Milledgeville on the schedule. Yeah, we. I mean, we got to clean things up. That's why I told these guys. I mean, you know, to them, you know, film and all the smaller things. They don't. They don't. They don't quite grasp that. You know, that stuff kind of that that builds up. That stuff's right. important. So, um, you know, just continuing to preach to them how important these small detail things is um, is is what we need to continue to do as a as a coaching staff. As they're getting ready to do some fireworks here, we'll let you get out of here in just a second. Right. Uh, uh, but, you know, I, I I feel like you guys have some things, obviously, that you can that you can build on now, right? So you can look at some things. But do you feel like maybe West Central has shown maybe a, a, a recipe for what to do against BPC? And now your job is to change that recipe? Um, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. Uh, Ridgewood runs a very similar, if not the same, offense as this right now. And, and we knew that coming into this. And Ridgewood is going to watch that film. And I don't see why they wouldn't do it every single play. So we've got to figure out a way to stop that, figure out a way to get better. So, All right, sure. Coach. We'll let you get out of here. Right. And we will talk it. to you later. Thank you. We'll let you folks at home see some fireworks, I guess, here. Let's zoom that out and see if we can see some fireworks on the camera here. Why not show some fireworks, right, Chris? Hey, why not? I will say this is a first for me in all my years of doing football that we're going to end with fireworks. Hopefully Coach uh, Kirby can find his way up here in the dark. I don't know. He said he'd come up, but I don't know if he <laughs> – I don't know if he thought about it being dark when he was trying to do it or not. I feel like it's the 4th of July. It is. And you know fireworks are a whole lot more fun when, when you win. when you won, right? Yep, exactly. Can we go with the ooh and ahs that you normally get with <laughs> fireworks? I don't know if we should do that or not, but Well, I just did, so Well we didn't go ooh, ooh ah. ah. There we go. Oh, heck. Well, can you see enough to go through some stats while we're waiting on uh, Coach Kirby here? Well, I think I can. We talked about uh, Stepson unofficially. I've got him at 44 carries or 309 yards. Gage Stimson, he had seven carries or 25. Cooper uh, Gibbs, uh, nine carries for 58. Xander Anderson, four carries for 10. Lane Huffman, 15 carries for 144 yards. As we do see uh, Coach Kirby up here. Brock Beekman, one carry for tw uh, two. T uh, Town Love, I had eight, three carries for 86 yards. Love, five of six passing for... Or, uh, 5 of uh, 13 passing for 115 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Brock Beekman, two catches for 30. Huffman, one for 32. Perelku, one for 15. And Pierce, one for, or Perelku, one for 38. And Pierce, one for 15. Coach Kirby has found his way up here. We'll get him on a microphone here. I think that maybe the fireworks are done. Maybe he'll be able to hear us. Hey, Coach, I don't know if, if, if young Mr. Stefson, Stefson is in earshot or not, but We'd be willing to put him on camera and talk to him if he's around. Could you get somebody to get him? I can. Here, Coach. We'll let Coach go do that. I'd love to get him on because he I believe he was a a <laughs> As Coach Kirby's gonna see if they can track, track him down. Track him down. And uh we'll get Coach Kirby on until he gets up here. Coach, uh, oh, he's right here. Let's just get him on here real quick. I'm going to turn the camera around so everybody at home can see this young man because 
it's homecoming night, and when you're going to uh, when you're going to 25 years down the road, and you're going to try to uh, <laughs> we'll see. There you go. Step you right up him? there. There you go. We can see him a little bit. Boy, I, I tell you what, uh, we we actually likened this game, young man, to uh, Al Bundy. You're going to have a memory to live for. You probably don't even know who that is, do you? <laughs> Coach Kirby knows who that is. So anyway, we had you for 44 carries. That is correct. Did you 309 uh, yards? Did, uh, thereabouts. 16. Yeah. Okay. Did you uh, do you expect to have that kind of a ball game tonight? Not that many. No. <laughs> I'll tell you what. What you were you on a homecoming court too? I was. Yeah. Yeah. So you're a homecoming court. So that means you're a senior, right? Yes. You're a senior. It's homecoming game. You've got, like, the best memory that anybody could have on homecoming. I mean, what's that going to be like in 20 years, you think? Just look back on it and be able to tell all my friends how much fun I had. You guys were dominant, and it, you were dominant. The offensive line, though, was really the key, I thought. Yeah. What was it like running behind those guys tonight? Just waiting for an opening. I mean, once I saw that hole, I just struck it. Now, one of the things that uh, I, I said during the contest was you, you did an NFL kind of move, and I'm sure Coach Kirby was yelling at you to do it, but you broke. You could have had a touchdown there late in the game, and you stopped and, and dropped. Yeah. Were you being told to do that, or was that just football knowledge, knowing you didn't need to score, you just need to run out the clock? Kind of both. Like, I do what he says, but <laughs> we could have run out the clock. It was five. We didn't need a touchdown. Five minutes left, we didn't need a touchdown there. We could have just ran out the clock. Yep, and I, I, when you dropped down and didn't score that touchdown, I was impressed. In fact, Chris and I said it looked like BPC might have been trying to let you guys score yeah, a little late. bit. It, was, it yeah. was a big hole. I didn't yeah. expect that. Uh, so you guys started off slow this season, obviously. You've, you've kind of in, in two-game winning streak now. I guess we can call it a streak since it's two in a row. Yeah. Do you feel like you've turned the corner a little bit and maybe playing West Central Heat football again? Yeah, I mean – once we got that win, we all just kind of flipped the switch. We needed that. Well, I'm sure you want to go down and celebrate with your friends and have fun tonight. So congratulations on a Herculean kind of performance. Only, we were uh, impressed. Only way you could top us be homecoming king tomorrow night at the dance. That would be nice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a clean sweep for the weekend. All right. Well, congratulations on a great game. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it, Isaac. Thanks, man. Isaiah. Thanks for coming up. Stephson, he was – man, he's a – he is – coach, he was a man tonight, wasn't he? He was. Uh you know, we uh, between Coach Arnold on the headset and Coach Unruh right next to me, um, there was no doubt that both of them were grilling me. Hey, Isaiah, Isaiah, 23 is getting the ball. You know, and I was I was just kind of after them that guys, we we got to give them another optic. They they've got to put their eyes somewhere else. And finally, you know, in the in the fourth quarter, we did ran a, a second back, and it went for about 12. And it was like, whoa, somebody else had the ball. I just – I needed them to do that. And then we po we popped a couple more just right. because the, the optic of somebody else having it. But, yeah, Isaiah ran like a man tonight. And he, he's, he's, our, he's our bell cow. There's no doubt about it. And, and what we're doing offensively, you've got to have somebody that, that runs like that. And he, he was nice to have tonight. Well, I, I noticed – and I think it was the third quarter you ran a pretty good counter too uh, that – you pounded with Stephson, you pounded with Stephson, Webb around the end, and then you countered back with the 24. I can't remember his name, but he went, you know, for 15 or 16 yards on that carry yeah, too. Yeah, Xander, yeah. Xander Anderson. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he, uh, we, and we actually in the first half, he had one that we thought he would have scored on, but he outran his block. He, he came long on it, and we talked about it at halftime and drew it back up. He was like, yeah, let me run it again. We just waited till we got the right opportunity, and, and, he, and he had a nice gain on that as well. Your offensive line were men tonight too i mean were. we were talking about especially in the second half they're blocking 10 12, 12 15, 15 yards down, down the field. field they were just dominating the, the, the line of scrimmage you know I, I think their pride was hurt early in the year i, I do I, I you know they they got beat physically when we played flanagan and they weren't ready to play physically um they ask them to a man they, they they're sick to their stomach uh, about the peoria heights game because they they felt like they weren't physical enough and they, last week they, they just kind of said, listen, this, this is the way this has got to be. And it's made a difference. And, you know, they're playing lower. Uh, they're, they're playing more physical. Their double teams are really good. Um, and, and our trap blocking is pretty good too. Well, you have some good coaches. You're a good coach. You have some good coaches on your sideline with you. You look for a recipe of some sort, if you want to call it that, every game, right, for mm -hmm. what you think will work against. Did You run your offense, but did you think that – particular just steps and steps and steps and was going to be as effective against Bushnell as it was I, I did when I saw their alignment um, you know every week you see something different 
and they because of what Wade did last week around the end on on Buck Sweep, they they played their end to defeat that, which meant that they had to they, they were only playing with seven guys to be honest. And by only playing with seven, we knew we had a, a bubble in the middle that we could run. And we didn't necessarily on Wednesday and Thursday think he was going to have 44 carries, but on uh, Friday at 7:05 we did. Yeah. How many times have you had a player run 44 times in a game? Um, I think I had I've had one other that had 42. Um, yeah, one other 42 at at, at Mainless, and then. Uh, <laughs> At United Township, I had a, a, a guy that had probably 40 one night against Rocky. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's just, you don't see that very mm -hmm. often. Nope. And I said, this is a game both teams have got to be sore in the morning because it was a bunch of stuff right Hard up the middle, hitting. pounding down each other, hitting each other the whole I time. Um, the other thing that I thought, you guys have been in some games. You've had some lopsided scores, but you've been in games. Bushnell really, other than the Westbury game, hadn't played a full four quarters. It looked like that maybe played a toll as the game rolled along, too. I felt like our offensive line pushed that point. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like our offensive line physically continuing to, to get after them. You could see that wearing them down. We we really tell our kids, pay attention, the, the nine-minute mark in the second quarter. What's, what's the other team feeling like? What are they acting like? The six-minute point in the third quarter is a, is a big number for us. We really want our kids to recognize what, what the other team's like. And our kids were pretty funny. At the six-minute mark in the third quarter, I think we're still down. We might have been down two touchdowns at that point. But they were really, really confident because they could see the body language of the other team when we were running the football. It's funny you mention that because Chris and I were talking that as we looked back on the game, it was right after Bushnell's touchdown six minutes in eight or nine minutes left in the quarter or you know five minutes left in a quarter something like six in that range where you guys really took control mm -hmm. and then you really dominated the rest of the way outside of a couple fourth down plays that were crazy crazy <laughs> plays that you know you, you're never yeah. right for you they're extremely frustrating right. for them they could have been momentum changing but your kids didn't allow them to be that yeah, way they didn't and that's a great point yeah. I, I probably would have overlooked that um that very frustrating from a coaching standpoint but you know, our kids didn't let that get them down. And, and I now that you say that, I'm thinking back, they did kind of rally in those situations. Like, mm -hmm. no, come on, let's go. And that, that's that's refreshing. There's, there's growth there for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you when BPC scores on a fourth and 10 from yeah. 25 or 35 yards out, and then they score on a quarterback scramble for a two-point conversion, it obviously, again, wasn't the play that was called. Your kids come out on that last drive. And I said before, when BPC was down by, by 10 still, I said, you know, there's not been a turnover in this entire game. That that turnover, if a turnover comes, West Central has it. It's the BPC's right back in, right? Oh man! But and when you guys got the football with 550 left or whatever it was for that last drive, it took some intestinal fortitude to hold on to the football, make the blocks you needed, and do the things you have to do after giving up two plays like that. I, I think yeah. if you watch your rewind, um, when you see those timeouts. Uh, our coaches are, are literally talking about bullet points on how to mm -hmm. hold the football and and things that they've got to <laughs> right. do. You know, I actually, they, actually you point could, point out Stephson. Yeah, Stephson was coming around the end one time and he didn't. He wasn't even looking up. He had his head down, both arms on the ball, and not looking to go anywhere. You're, you're exactly right. I mean, we we told our kids if we on, if we recovered the onside kick, we were going to win because we were sure that we could run the clock out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what. The, the marching and getting the first downs and the staying on track um, and staying with the chains as opposed to uh, getting a, a penalty. In the first half, penalties absolutely killed both teams. Killed yes. Yeah, both yeah. ways. Um, I mean, we're two touchdowns. A tip drill touchdown to yes. start, and then us getting penalties caused us not to score. Uh, you know, that it might make it a little bit different, but those sort of things happen through the mm -hmm. course of a game, both sides. Uh, back to the first half, you called a timeout and it was after an illegal procedure penalty. You went directly to the player. I'm not going to say what player it was. You went directly to him. You talked and then went directly to the officials. I thought maybe that there was some simu simulated snap count or some talk going on or something. Was that what you were trying to see? No. Or, no? It was, there's no play called. It's it, 100% is we wanted to see the front they're in, so we're going to get a try, try and get them to jump. And if they don't jump, I'm calling a timeout because of the situation we're in. We, we feel really confident if we know the front, we're going to call the right play. So we, we called no play. 
And they jumped anyway. It's, yeah, Notre Dame does. But, we, I mean, it's Notre Dame, <laughs> Notre Dame, and all of our kids are like, Notre Dame empty means we aren't, we aren't tagging it with anything and calling something behind it. Um, there are a lot of times we'll go into, like, Notre Dame whiskey or something like that. But, yeah, it was just flat Notre Dame, and he jumped, and I <laughs> – my, my, my ears so, might have been tingling so, a little bit on blood pressure. So, you, so I was wrong on that. I thought maybe when you went and talked to the official that he was, you know, because there was so much there, and especially the first half of jumping and moving from both teams. I mean, it's it seemed like that. I don't. I didn't know if there was simulated snap counts going on, or just people were antsy, or what was going on. They they had our snap count. They were really good with it. Uh, they they really hurt us uh, knowing our snap count. Um, we we're going to have to do something this week about that. Well, Coach, I appreciate you letting us be here. Yeah, I appreciate well, thanks, you coach. coming up and talking to us. And, Love it. And uh, week nine, put, put us at, at Westbury. At Westbury, Westbury that's right. And uh, it, put a few wins together here, and maybe you can uh, sneak in the back door into the playoffs and and uh, make some noise there again. I was going to say, I, Coach, uh, we emailed, emailed me and said you hope you guys played better. I think you guys played better, and we had a heck of a football game here tonight. I think I think we played better. I think we turned a corner. But you know, as as I say to Temple on the radio and Taylor on the radio next week. Yep. Ne- ne- yep. Ne- oh, the only thing we're worried about is right. next week, yep. Monday. Our kids, and, and I'm, I'm really proud of our kids on how they buy into that. They, let's go 1 0. They don't worry about anything else. If you go 1 0 f- four more times or three more, three times, more times, you're, you're uh, in the playoffs probably. Mm-hmm. So uh, it sure would be nice to get the state champ, to send any state champs back in the playoffs, wouldn't it? Be all right. <laughs> that's, what I, that's kind of what I figured you'd say. Well, right. Coach, thanks for coming thanks, and talking Coach, to us. We appreciate it. it. Thanks so much. Congratulations. We'll see you at week nine, win. if not before. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate Coach it. Kirby talking to us here on the post-game show. Chris, you got anything before we go? Uh, no. Well, that'll do I it then from West Central High School in Bigsville, Illinois. For Chris Frankhauser, I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Thanks for joining us. 36-34, the Heat get win number two. BPC falls to four and two. You've been watching – Devin Raleigh Shelter Insurance coverage of BPC Sports on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH.